All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Opinionated Off Topic. Today we got some two very special guests, Ricky and Ivan. And you know, we're just glad that they came on. We got some athletes over here to join me. You know what I mean? Some Carlos, you, know, Carlos is, you know, wash sometimes. I don't know. But appreciate you guys for having us, man. Yeah, I know uh, uh, Carlos has no talked about this for a while, yeah. and uh, me and Ricky, as soon as he mentioned, I was like, "Yeah, I'm down. I'm ready to go." I always keep up with y'all's Instagram, Twitter, everything you guys drop, and uh, yeah, cause, it's I mean, good I've, stuff, I've asked man. A while back, and then you hit me up again, and like, yeah, probably October, no, October, or something. yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was still in um, out of town when he hit me up, and I was like, "Yeah, we we'll get back." Yeah, I was and even talking. To we really didn't want on. to um, have guests on until we had uh, three cameras, which y'all see in this video. Um, but yeah, we finally got our three cameras. That's when we wanted to have guests on because for the longest we only had that one. And then we never used his camera, but now we have three. I got mine, and now we're chilling, ready. Oh, yeah, go. Right. and we got the yeah, wall man, done too. Up. Like oh, yeah. people haven't even seen the wall. Like it, it's completely different vibe. Start a year off right. Like we got everything going. No, so. the first. Uh, People yeah, with the three, only right, the cameras only and only right. right. Yeah. yeah, much love. Uh, but first things first, uh, we just kind of want to hear a little backstory about y'all, where y'all come from, how y'all pretty much got to where y'all were. Kind of explain what y'all do a little bit, because I mean, we didn't say what y'all do. No, nobody knows what y'all do. Go for it. Hey, well, um, I mean, I grew up with you. I grew up around here. I'm from Austin, uh, born and raised. High school, I went to Stony Point. Moved around right before my freshman year there in Round Rock. Um, played there four years, and um, I've always played travel ball when I was younger. You play? Baseball. baseball. Yeah, yeah. So it's baseball. Got to mention that. But uh, yeah, ever since I was four years old, um, played every position, played everywhere. You know, just had fun. Didn't know where it was gonna lead to. Um, then, uh, sort of like growing up, I kind of figured, all right, this is my deal. You know, like you kind of find your niche it's either you play mm -hmm. football you play basketball you got something something that you're good at then you finally realize that and uh sure enough i had, it was just like dreams come true after that it's like work hard see if you can master it see if you can get there and then from there it's just things just fall into place for you did you just play it because you're good you actually like love the game no i loved or it both. i loved it i mean yeah i mean obviously if you're good at something you want to keep doing it right like it feels good but, uh, yeah, I love the game. I loved how now, looking back, you can do so well for eight ABs and you're on top of the world. And then after that, the next day, you can strike out all eight. And it's like, all right, humble yourself. There, there's always another step that you can't just brag and keep going. It, yeah. It's always going to humble you at a certain point. And then it goes straight into life as well. So yeah. that was, that's my favorite thing, that you can compare a lot of the baseball things in life two things that happened in your own life. Played four years at Stony Point, and how, the, how was that? It was fun. I mean, um, Tom Collins was the head coach there at the time, and um, he had a lot of bad reviews at first, but I went in there, I'm like, hey, just gotta get your work done, play your game and see where it goes. Uh, sure enough, it actually wasn't at the catching position because they had Kiki back there, and I played second base my freshman year. So it was kind of like a all right. Started fielder. You started all four years on varsity. Yeah, I started all four years, and then even sophomore year, I kind of caught every now and then. But I played third, so it was like all right, because Kiki was back there as well, and he was really good. And then finally, saw, uh, my junior and senior year, that's when I caught mainly, and then I would, I would try and close. You know, at, at the time, <laughs> I would try and pitch. You know, but uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. And then. Um, my junior year actually committed to West Virginia. And after that, I mean, the rest is history, man. They helped me out so much. And I got to play Big 12 baseball against really good people. Got to meet really good friends who are now brothers that I always communicate with. And just the experiences that I got to live through, going through that at a Big 12 level. How was the city like how is West Virginia don't get into it don't get into it but is it like a cultural shock <laughs> just like <laughs> West Virginia <laughs> it is well so me growing up in Texas my whole life and I, I never went to West Texas to go hunt and stuff as a kid so I never saw snow my freshman year we got 28 inches so I was in the dorm room just cuddled up in my bed heated blanket me and my roommate Zarb he's from Georgia 
So he didn't really experience the cold either. So we just stay in our dorm room, go to class, puffied up, like layers on layers. I was sweating in class because I didn't want to be cold. <laughs> I didn't want to be cold, and they would never yeah. cancel. So finally they canceled like three days only. And I'm like, Damn, walking through snow. Yeah. And then same thing. Uh, in practice, you're dragging your gear through snow. Like it, it y'all gets crazy. Y'all still practice in the snow, or y'all like have like well, no, indoor facility? Yeah, so we would use the. Uh, we called it the IPF. Wait, that's the. Is that the like the? Is y'all spot like that video that went viral where y'all like tossed a ball into those like? The, it was like a gymnastics. Yeah. Gymnastics. No, no, no. So, so that's mm. the gymnastics gym. Uh-huh. That's like we would do diving practice there. So we would just take off, and then Coach Mays would toss the ball. You just lay out. Did, but, did yeah. that work? Did that help? Yeah, man. Still like, no, man, our, 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 our outfit was crazy. Yeah, everybody was diving. It was good. But, uh, yeah, we used this thing called the IPF, and uh, it was an indoor football facility. And the only thing that sucked about that is it was white walls. So you can imagine the, ball. Oh, the pitcher <laughs> destroyed the hitters, dude. No chance. No chance. The hitters yeah, would be like, hey, no shot. you got to sell out right here. This is it. One pitch, if not. You're done, and sure enough, dude. Pretty much, is everybody like just look for the fastball? Yeah, it's yeah. like if you see if you see fastball, you better swing wherever it is. Hope you make contact because you couldn't see it. It was terrible. And then we like try to put a screen in the back, still didn't work. No dice, Mm-mm. no dice. But then when we go back on the field later on that year, ooh, beach ball, dude, beach ball. That's All crazy. the hitters were hot. Just people don't realize like how even when you when it's like during the day or like if. The ball's dirty and it's like getting like yeah. dust time. Yeah, that shit's hard to see. Well, so Friday nights, our the field was on top of the highest mountain in Morgantown, so it would overlook the whole city, and we didn't have a hitter's eye at one point. So the the Friday night game, it's around six thirty seven o'clock, it, the sky's gray. So dude, you couldn't see it. There was like punchies after punchies, strikeouts after strikeouts until it was like the third. When it was like dark, the lights were on, you can see the baseball. That's crazy. So, yeah, it was like, I really can't see. Everyone would come back after a punchy. Oh, dude, I just can't see it. I can't see spin. I can't see anything. What, uh, did you, you start off four years in high school? Did you start off four years there? Did you go to four, there for four years? Because I know, like, what is it, 21 or three years, and you can go to the league or go to the draft, I should say? Yeah, so if you go Division One, you got to go to the school for three years. Or it's, is it that? Or, or, can or, you turn or, yeah. or you're 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or if you're 20. Because you can go two years if you're 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's some uh, draft eligible software. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Sure. Uh, so did you go all four years? You go three years? Yeah, so I went all four years. I got drafted my senior year in the eighth round by the White Sox. So Did you start all four years or no? Yeah, I did. So actually, nice. I didn't. So the first half of my freshman year, I wasn't really playing much. I was playing the Tuesday games, like one weekend game. It wasn't really much like of a starting thing. But I started getting a lot of pinch hits, a lot of pinch hits. And then midway through the season, Coach Mays was like, hey, man, you're, you're swinging it well. Like, go ahead and, like, get the start. And then I started third base for the, whole, the rest of the season. And then, Did they know you could play third base? Yeah, they knew a little bit. They would ask, like, hey, um, did you play before? Because during BP, I would mess around. I wouldn't be, like, a catcher and go shag in the outfield. I'd be in third base, like, when nobody was there. And I would just feel just messing around, getting – it was just something like to get the nerves out, you know, like I'm a freshman, like, let me go do something. I don't want to just stand here and get the jitter. So I would just go field ground balls. And uh, so they started noticing like, all right, like he's actually like kind of decent. And then uh, that's where he, he threw me in. He came up to me the game of and he was like, hey, you know, you're in there, right? And I was like, in where? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to the dugout. <laughs> but he was like, no, yeah, you're starting. And I was after that, it's just. Go to work, you know, do what you do. Any accolades since you started? Like, I know, I mean, people Ooh. who typically all start all four years. Yeah, any, like, conference player of the year. Yeah, like, um, all Big 12. Freshman All-American, no big deal. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All-American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll drop it. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, my uh, freshman year, I ended up being freshman All-American. Um, I think I was on the all-freshman team. I was uh, – I think I was like Big 12 second team catcher. And then sophomore year, I was on the third team, all Big 12. And then junior year, I don't think I got anything. And then senior year, I was on the all Big 12 team again, second team. So yeah, I had a couple accolades here and there throughout my career. Um, 
I, had a, I forgot what question I was going to ask you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I was going to say, like, what was your – what was, like, the year when you were playing you were like, all right, like, I could probably go, like, pro. Like, what, what year – was that for you honestly it was my junior year so i did get some calls but it was just nothing that i mean it was worth taking for me yeah so just didn't work out went back for my senior year worked out for me you know that the white Sox loved me as a catcher and they gave me the opportunity to play but um it's just i guess when you get to college like ricky will tell you um he knew he wanted to play at tennessee and i'm sorry he'll tell you about himself but yeah no, nah, I know. I'm sorry, yeah, but like, like yeah, I do it, bro. but yeah, like, bro. you you know that you belong in a certain level. So it's like, yeah, yeah I belong here, and that's what like you kind of get whenever you start getting in there. Yeah. At first, you don't really have that. It's like, all right, well, I'm new to this. It's like Division One, whatever. Like, let me see. But uh, what I always tell kids now, it's like, you're there. They gave you the opportunity. Go do it. You know, have that from the jump, and. um that's what it felt like. It was like, I feel like I can play at that level. Yeah. So once I was comparing myself, and obviously I compared my numbers and stuff to other catchers that are getting drafted, it was very comparable. Like, they were close. Mm-hmm. So that's when I kind of put it together. I'm like, yeah, there's a chance here. Somebody's going to give me a shot. Yeah. Um, I remember the question I was going to ask you. We all know pretty much in any sport, height is a factor. And you're – on the lower side of, of the height, how much did you think that was going to affect or did it affect you at all? Yeah, so um, I talk about this all the time, and um, I always tell the kids, I always have, like, little fans that I always mean stuff, and they play ball, and their parents always tell me, like, hey, he's really, like, self-conscious about his height. And I did for a little bit, but the way I took that out is by playing. So I'm like, I could never go up to somebody and kind of chirp him, you know, like, hey, I'm so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. I would always just let my playing do the talking because I just knew that if there was another catcher across and he passed the eye test, I was like, okay, he passes the eye test, but can he play? So it was like me versus you. It's like, Ricky, there's another shortstop. All right, who's going to be the best shortstop that day? Who who are the fans going to remember? So that was always my goal. It's like, all right, you pass the eye test. I don't. But you're going to remember me. You're going to remember how I played that game, how hard I played. So that's what I always shoot for. And um, I just saw this documentary a long time ago. And this old baseball player said how how he played hard every game. And it was only one motive. And it was just because there's always going to be a new person in the stands. So he was like, impact them. Make them remember you. Do something that game. I'm like, you're right. Somebody might not ever get to see you play again. So why not leave an imprint, right? Why not yeah, let honestly. them know? Well, and that may be the only game they ever go to. Like exactly. if it's a kid, you know, like that may be the only major league game or, or minor league game that they ever see in person, right? And they remember so, like, you forever too. Yeah, exactly. Well, and for you to take it for granted and slack off, like it's just not fair. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like they're spending their absolutely. hard-earned money yeah. to go and watch you play. So. So that, to answer your question, it, like, it would be in the back of my head, but I knew, like, my, my level of play, I'm like, all right, once that guy says play ball, I'm going to show him that it, it's, it's not all about height. It's not all about size, you know? Yeah. How, I guess, well, I'll ask this question a little bit later, um, but getting on to you, Rick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, same route pretty much as, uh, as Ivan. We grew up playing together, um, I don't know, probably since 13 or 14. Um, the baseball world's kind of small, so – we probably knew of each other before that, um, but played at Pflugerville for four years, whooped up on Stony Point. Go Panthers. Just about mm-hmm. every year. Go Pete Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. To, you know. We might have to go on Google and look that up. <laughs> I don't know about that. Match but not, nah, yeah. Um, same thing. Went to college. Um, played three years. I kind of bounced around. I had a little bit of a different route. Um, I went and played my freshman year at Sacramento well, State. Before you get into that. Um, your years at Pflugerville, did you, as well as him, did you play all four years on varsity? Or yeah, you, yeah, so all four did? years. Um, I played second base uh, three of those years, and then my senior year I played short. Uh, and then I got to pitch a little bit my senior year, too. Threw me on the ball. Oh, that's nice. Did, my you, bad. Uh, did you take anybody's spot? Because I know his <coughs> freshman year he took a senior spot at second base. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't want to just – Someone played there before me, obviously, but I don't I don't know if it was like a solidified like, hey, this guy was a yeah. you know, a starter for multiple years or anything. Um 
But like Ivan was saying, I always just felt like wherever I was going, kind of playing with the chip, like I have a chance to take some of the spots. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how we grew up playing. I mean, since we were young. How did it feel being like young? I mean, for both of y'all, like being young, being like a starter, like pretty sure like when you're a freshman and like you're on varsity, it's like, whoa, like you don't, you have all the clout, you know, like all that stuff. So how is that? Like, Yeah, yeah. It is cool. Um, but for me, I think from like a real early age, yeah. um, I knew I wanted to play baseball when I was in eighth grade because I had a chance to play on varsity. And then once I made the team, had a pretty good freshman year, I was like, I want to go play college ball. So it was never like a yeah. sit back and enjoy the moment yeah. type of thing. It was like, I want to get to the next keep level. Elevating. Yeah, yeah, and then um, because I heard you're a little bit, a uh, little bit good of a quarterback too. Yeah, yeah, I was playing football. So oh, don't the thing, tell me that. The don't thing me about uh, <laughs> seventh grade that. A team, seventh grade A team. My bad. Uh, uh, nice. But um, so now, what, like, yeah, what, what, what? If you knew you were good at football, and then what made you like you knew you were good at baseball? What made you go like towards baseball rather than football? Yeah. So the the thing that separated baseball for me was um kind of the size component and stuff, right? In basketball and in football, like you kind of need to be big. Either yeah. you need to have some sort of weight or height, right? I mean, there's not a lot of five eleven, six foot quarterbacks playing in the league everywhere that aren't super fast, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I felt like at with with baseball, I had the most um, or the the greatest chance to kind of have success with the body that I had. Yeah. Um, and so I just took it and, and ran with it. And it was the same thing, like going into high school, kind of have that doubt, but then you have a little bit of success. And then it's like, all right, like I belong and I can hang with these people. Let's try and elevate and go to the next level and see what we can do. Yeah, one thing about that is a lot of people don't know is that before we got into high school, we were already playing 18 year olds. So yeah. a lot of people don't know that we were 14, 15, 16, like entering 18 year old tournaments because we couldn't play our own age group. Mm -hmm. Just and, and hanging, yeah, yeah. So like, and like, we were winning, winning, like winning, winning because, because we kept good. winning the tournaments. Like we were winning so, at fourteen, yeah, like we so were much. winning. They wouldn't let us play. With so like, girls when we board. would enter the tournament, people would drop out, so they were losing money. So they're like, "Hey, you guys are gonna have to bump up age." So we we're like, "All right, we'll go bump up." And then it was age by age, and we were like, "Dude, we're dominating. Like, what, what's going on?" So then we finally got to the, the top tier, which is the eighteen, and we were still winning. We would go to Waco. We would go to Dallas here. Round Rock. What anyway. happened when he went to Georgia? Oh, uh, I mean. <laughs> Georgia's different. Yeah, bro. Georgia's <laughs> different. People come out the woodwork. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at that point, it's like, you better go get yours. Yeah, yeah. For those of y'all don't know, Perfect Game is held in Georgia, which now is supposed to be held here in Huddo. Yeah, yeah, I saw a, that. Uh, I was looking at the They're building a facility. Yeah, yeah in Huddo. The headquarters. Yeah, headquarters, yeah, headquarters yeah. But um, it's pretty much where all the top teams in the nation go. There's – yeah. It's the top are, of amateur baseball. It's the top yeah, basically yeah. the top of the top go play if, there. Yeah, every and if summer. you want to go play college ball and it's called perfect game. Get drafted, that's, that's where you go. Yeah. That's where these these guys went. Um that's, what's up. that's dope. I don't know if you did. I know you played in a little bit of something in high school, but you did you or did you not make the team USA team? Uh I went to the tryouts. Like I made the South Texas or the North Texas. Uh thing. Me, Stephen Pena and, and Johnny Panatex went out there. Oh, yeah. That was in North Carolina. Um, and it was like that, a three game live ass photo. Yeah, it was moment. sick. It was cloud, yeah. bro. I was like, hey, yeah, like, I got a chance to play with this team. Yeah, it dope. was cool. Oh, because y'all had the uni, right? It was right? a Nike sign, yeah. and they said, like, they said something that they all said something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those, uh, that was like a sponsor, like another little, like Nike was sponsoring a little event and stuff, but. It was like Chase Your Dream or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Something, yeah, like something like cool, that. something cool. It was like just that. Something double. Yeah. Like, Had to put it on the gram. Had to put it on the gram. Yeah, you Come on. You can't miss out to like that. After your senior year, you played for Team Texas. Yeah, it was uh, my junior year. Your junior? Oh, my your junior, junior year. Yeah, my junior year, I played for Team Texas. So it was like, I think it was the best or the top 20 baseball players in that state so it was like texas georgia tennessee team canada um and a couple other i don't even, i can't remember but yeah and it was just a bunch of dudes so like chris paddock was on that team a lot of guys uh jake elliott went, was, it, was lucan on that team lucan was on that team yeah tcu jake elliott went to oklahoma state um what about durbin durbin feltman was he on that team? durbin wasn't on that team no um but there was a can't remember his name another pitcher that went to tcu so it was like a lot of big 12 guys and how did it feel like damn I'm top 20 best player in the state oh it was cool i i didn't i had no idea that was a thing i had i didn't either i had no clue and then um i, I realized i got the list and it was like patty it was like the guys that i kind of like grew up playing with because I, I grew up playing against lucan in houston he played for a team called the uh turn two rattlers dominated destroyed <laughs> 
And yo, yo, they no, yo. then, then. They I mean, Lucan yo. was that yeah. big when he was 12 years old. Yeah, f- <laughs> dude. When I was talking for the first time, because we played him in high school uh, uh, during the playoffs, that was Massive. like the mm. biggest, besides uh, the cool. dude that played Just D-line, friend or what? Man, man child. Dude, he, man like, you child. could tell he wasn't grown into his body yet. Mm. For real. Dude, it was, was just all massive. baby, like all just massive baby fat. That's just crazy. Yeah. What school did he play at? He went to TCU. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember that. Not to brag a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Texas one. Didn't y'all win? Yeah, we did. We went 9 0. Undefeated. Sorry about it. Yeah, yeah. Brag, brag, and what's brag. crazy yeah. is that when we played Team Georgia, my roommate was on that team at West Virginia my freshman year. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Small world. Man. Yeah, and the baseball I was like, community is real small. You we find smacked them around. Play. That's what I told them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to cut you yeah. off a little bit. No, but no, get no, back no. to you. Go back to you. Um, we played four years at Flickerville. Um, after that, when did you start like noticing the separation of like, okay, I can play in college, like. Well, I think it was like my freshman year of high school because I did really well my, my freshman year on varsity. And so I was like, well, like I'm hanging with older dudes that are playing in college. Like I have a chance to be at that level too, right? Um, and so going into uh, my senior year, um, I got a good offer from Sacramento State. And so I went ahead and took it, um, played my freshman year out there, got to play a lot. <clears throat> I think I started like, I don't know, 50 games or something, but I played third base. Um, and then... How was that going from second? Well, no, you yeah. played third base and no, you didn't. No, you no, I just stop. yeah, I was yeah. always yeah. always a middle stop. guy, um, and they had like a fifth year senior coming back, an older dude playing second yeah. as well, and so, um, but I didn't care. I would have gone and played catcher. I just wanted to be on the field, yeah. be in the lineup, yeah, like I just want to play. Yeah. Um, and so, slowly kind of worked my ways and opportunities same way, and then it was like, hey, another guy's not doing so well. You know, you're starting today. All right, and then just taking advantage of those opportunities when they came, um, and then after that, at the end of the year. It was kind of one of those things that kind of bothered me in high school was um, I didn't have that big that big school that was recruiting me. Yeah. But I felt like I could play with dudes that were getting recruited at big schools. Um, and then I think the perception was just that these players were just so much more elite than everybody else, right? If you're playing at Texas, it's like, that guy's playing yeah, at Texas. At Texas like, that's a big yeah, school, yeah. right? And so we were playing big schools in preseason games, and I'm, I'm kind of comparing myself to the other shortstop. And I'm thinking, like, I can do what he's doing at that at the same level. Like, why am I at a mid major, and he's at a at a power five D one? Yeah. And so that kind of stuck with me throughout the year, uh, when I was at Sac State, and then at the end of the season, I decided um, I wanted to go to junior college and try and try and go to one of those big schools, um, and, and just kind of see what happened. And, and uh, thankfully, the, the card. So I went to uh, Grayson in uh, in North Texas. Isn't that like a pretty good? Yeah, yeah. So there, it's cool. um, there's two regions here in Texas. Um, San Jack kind of runs one yeah, region, San and then Jack. Grayson, McLennan, and uh, and Cisco are pretty much the other uh, three powerhouses there. But JUCO ball in Texas is is a lot different than a lot of the places. I mean, there's a lot of good players coming out coming out of here and stuff. So, um, but thankfully Tennessee picked me up out of there and gave me that shot, you know, and, and allowed me to kind of fulfill that dream of, of playing SEC ball. So. Well, he said that you wanted to go to Tennessee. What made you want to go to Tennessee? Like, why Tennessee? Well, they were just honestly the first school that, that reached out to me. I mean, like, right when I got done playing summer ball, they reached out, said, hey, you know, we're interested, yeah. showed up to a game, showed love, and I was like, all right, this is what I want. And the thing that kind of, I guess, um, threw me on them was – how straight up the coaching staff was. I mean, they weren't BS and beating around the bush. It was like, hey, we're not promising that you're going to play, but you have a good opportunity to play. Yeah. So, I mean, what more can you ask for, you right? Like, I don't shot. exactly. Yeah. 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 So and that's a big, that big thing, school. man. Feeling like home a little bit because yep. I mean, yeah. you're moving away. Yeah. And it's like, all Different right, culture, all that. Yeah. yeah. He's letting me know straight up what's going to go down, and he's not BSing you, which is nice to know going in. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, they gave me a good offer. Took my visit. And I said, yeah, deal's done. I don't even want to shop around anymore. Like, this is this is all I asked for, so I don't want to let it slip. Well, so since you play in the SEC, like, I talk to him all the time about, like, SEC baseball. Like, I look at I look at the list. It's like the whole conference is ranked every year. Was... Sorry, Dang. I'm just better. I knew this was going to get brought up, but, uh, too. I knew I mean, it. Well, because I was going to tell you. Yeah. Going the same way, but I was yeah. going to ask you, how was it playing SEC baseball and how was it playing Big 12 yeah. baseball? Well, go ahead you can ask him that. No, go ahead and finish your question. All right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, but uh, like, I see, I see the list, and I'm just like, you know, all these teams, you got, like, South Carolina that won a couple chips, you know, a few years ago, mm-hmm. Vanderbilt, like, Florida's always good, LSU. So, it's like, how was that? Like, every week, like, every series you played was just like, damn, like, 
I got to bring my A game. Like, like Vanderbilt like, Stadium. Like, how, how, how is that? Yeah, so um, the way our coaching staff put it when we were getting ready um, was uh, y'all are about to go through the gauntlet is, is what he called it. And Not so we, we started yeah. off the year 16-0. and 0. I mean, we were running through everybody. Yeah. Um, all the, like, mid-major schools, I mean, just, just pounding them. And then Sick. to open up SEC play, it was like, hey, y'all are getting Georgia. They're number two. And it's like, mm. y'all yeah, are like 21, tough. right? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. were like top 20, right? Yeah. So I, I think we opened up with Auburn, and they were like 15. Um, we played Georgia. They were number two. The next week was like Mississippi State. They're number five. Vandy's number four. Mm. And it's just like there's no breathing room. I mean, pitchers are coming out of the woodworks. Like Vandy threw a guy. He had like six innings. They were smashing us one game. He had like six innings on the year, and he's from the left side like 99. Did you? It's like, <laughs> why is this guy? This guy's not playing here. Exactly. Like, what is he doing? You Did know? you like, face Kumar? Yeah, we faced Kumar. That was the only game we won, actually. So, Yo, uh, beat him? yeah, that was cold. Yeah, so um, I mean, to us, they had a really good, um, a really good rotation. I, I think Drake Fellows was their Friday guy. Um, Raby, I want to say, was their Saturday dude, and then Kumar was Sunday guy. Um, but he kind of didn't come into his stride like that until the, the so kind of second season, half of the yeah. season. Yeah. yeah he so we caught off. him. He was a true freshman. Ooh, he, he was. Took yeah. Off, so we caught him like right before he started to take off. Um, had a good but time. we were throwing crochet. So, I mean, we had a good, mm, yeah, yeah, a good, good guy going as yeah. well. So, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, to answer your question a little more direct, uh, it was unbelievable. Like seeing the guys, even going into pro ball, it's, it's almost like a step down, like seeing the arms as consistent as you were in SEC. I mean, because it's really good baseball. Like, you're seeing some polished players already. How much did that help you going into pro ball? Oh, tremendously, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I got to play in the Cape before I went into to Tennessee. Um, and it was kind of eye-opening because I didn't do that well. And I was coming from junior college um, where you're not seeing, you know, the greatest players every single day. And then you're going to see, like, the top draft pr uh, prospects for this man, next draft that class. League, that league's no joke, It will man. eat you up, dude. And you're swinging wood bat. I mean, you're playing every single day. Um, and so going into Tennessee, I kind of had a better idea of what I needed to work on and what to expect, like going into the season and stuff. You put in the Cape too, right? Yeah, that's why I was telling them, like, that, that league's no joke because when we got there, when I got there, they, all the coaches are basically like, hey, most of these guys are going to play pro baseball. Like, this is, gonna, this is basically the one step down from pro ball. They're just not being paid. Sure enough, like, you're, you're facing first rounders, second rounders, even like 30th rounders that are just dudes. So it's like a bunch of guys that are going to go play pro ball for a year in college, and then you go back to college. So, yeah, it's, it's a really good league. Kind of digressing real quick, but what's the difference between, like, juco ball and D1 ball? Well, there's a lot of differences. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about <laughs> money. All talking about, yeah, you're talking about a uh, ham and cheese sandwich before the game with no locker room. Like, I'm changing in the dugout to I got 15 pairs of brand-new shoes and new backpacks and everything, like – not that, necessarily that, world, that, but more the playing wise. Yeah. Okay, playing wise. Playing wise, practice. Okay, well, so practice. Rules. Okay, yeah, practice. As far as rules and stuff, JUCO, there's no rules. It's like you're out there. We didn't have lights, so we would just practice till you couldn't see. Like you'd be hitting, and the coach was like, "Hey, can you see?" And you're like, "No, it's no. too dark." And he's like, "All right, we're done." Dang. You know, but and uh, when you start playing D1 ball, you have time limits and stuff like that, um, different restraints. Uh, but playing wise. There's, I mean, there's a lot of good players that are playing JUCO. I think it's just the depth. When you get to the SEC and stuff, it's every single guy was their dude on their JUCO yeah. team. Yeah. Um, or there's even no on their high school team. Or their high school or their team. High, yeah. I mean, there were some guys um, there that we played in SEC that were like second, third rounders out of high school, and they passed up on like a million dollars to yeah. go to college. You know, so you're like, all right, well that guy's playing for something now. Like he yeah. passed him on a million, he's trying to make more. You know well, what I mean? Don't do that. So, I wouldn't do that. If I, got, no, if I'm I was taking, nah, taking yeah. Yeah. Around, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm gone. Yeah, I'm getting I my know. payday and I'm, I'm starting yeah. my career. Oh, yeah, so we'll, we'll tell this to the college guys that we work out with, and it's like, dude, it's hard to make that money back. Like, that's a lot of money that they're trying to invest also in you. are taking the risk of getting hurt. Oh, that too. Yeah. There's a lot of that's variables. That's something, yeah, a play. lot of variables. And we talk about all the time, like, now you're going to go into a world where there's a lot of yous, right, or mm -hmm. better yous that have more experience. So it's like, you got to do that again and really solidify that spot yeah. to get that money back or more. Some guys do it, but it's hard. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. Luke, well, one of the guys, Lucan. Yeah, uh, he passed he, up on it. He, he was a big up, draft prospect. Got, he's yeah. Still, yeah. yeah, and he's still I mean, he bet on himself and yeah. it, it, and it, it worked out. Yeah. So, I mean, and it worked out. Same thing with uh, catcher for Baylor, Langoliers. He was like 10th overall. He got like 900K out of high school, turned it down. Now he made Four million. <laughs> four million. Four million. Four million. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I was like, when Luke did that, I was like, yeah, why, bro? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that, but um, I don't know if you know how football works, but he was telling me when, when the process of him getting drafted was um, 
they can pay for your college. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever yeah, you're really. done with the MLB or whenever, just I guess whenever. So um, the pro, the pro, they you, you have a certain, yeah. you have yeah. a certain yeah. time though. You have time a certain frame, time frame. Yeah. All that. That's yeah. pretty cool. If you get drafted to high school. Yeah. They, they yeah they're going to give you, they're going to give oh, you. Oh yeah. Well, for most people for high school, they'll give you uh, four years yeah. of whatever education you were yeah. supposed to get. So if you were signed with Alabama or something, they'd pay for those four years for you to go back. That's one of the things though, is like, if you play pro ball for five years, like let's say you get drafted out of high school and you go and you play for five years and get released. I mean, you're going to start over as a freshman and you're going to be, 23, 24 years old. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a tough one to get into. Paid for? But the, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it is. Yeah, but, I mean, cool, but you're, gonna, you're, you're not going to graduate at that point. Yeah. Now, you know the, what I mean? Don't you not get fulls, though, in baseball? It's like nah, 75%. Yeah, you only, you only get partials. They were asking me this question the other day, and I was like, I'll just save it for them. Nah, yeah. like, it's, just, it's just hard to get fulls in baseball. Well, so for baseball, they only have 11.7 full rides to give out okay. throughout mm-hmm. the, I don't know if it's the 35 players or the 27 or something. I right? think it's 35. Okay, so you have 11, almost 12 full rides to give out okay. uh, between the 35 players. So that's why everyone Jeez, gets a partial. that's crazy. But that was the big influence of my uh, decision to go to SAC was they were giving me a full ride. They were paying for everything. Yeah. And so I was like, I can't pass yeah, that can't up. Pass like, I'm not going gonna, gonna to pay a dime to go to school. I'm going to get education and play Division I yeah. baseball. You, like, I'm going to do yeah, it. A, you got, like, 85, right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the number. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> remember that, bro. Like 83. I, I, I percent like or something. five years ago. Yeah. I don't remember everything. But now, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got, you got 85. And he was, he was just asking me that. And I was like, just mainly the money. I mean, it's 100%. Yeah, I mean, man. you get it like that. I mean, you're getting a, a good education, too. And I mean, it's like, that it's like. Baseball doesn't bring in anywhere close to a football and basketball. No, no. no I mean, yeah. it is what it is. No, so that's like that's doesn't another reason why like they don't give them like, yeah. that big of a scholarship out. I'm like, yeah. I'm sure like people like Luke and uh, got like full rides because it's like every now and then or probably at least one person will get a full ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 someone that you know they're trying to show love to, and then especially if they're going to be a big draft prospect, mm-hmm. that school is obviously going to want to bring them in rather than them going yeah. to the draft, yeah. right? So they'll try and up the ante a little bit for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is a tough world, and I think the biggest thing is that Title Nine. That's kind yeah, of what I was telling him. About that's that, kind of yeah. what, because um, there's no equivalent on the women's mm-hmm. side of, of football, yeah. and they give out I don't know 64 rides or whatever they have. Yeah. Um, so I think baseball kind of gets shortchanged on that, but they're not yeah. bringing in a, a lot of money for most of the What is Title Nine? Title Nine, like um, just, I don't know the equal between women's yeah, sports yeah. and just men's explain sports. Because I know yeah, a lot, like, I know what it is. But okay, I know yeah. A lot of people yeah. out there. Don't so know Title what Nine, you, like the women's sports need to be equal to the men's sports. Yeah. Um, if not, then you gotta like remove a men's remove sports something. or yeah, remove something. Yeah. yeah. But That's they gotta be like equal. They gotta match. Like West Virginia, we don't have a, a women's softball team. Yeah. But like, we'll have like diving. We'll have tennis, gymnastics, uh, rowing. Mm-hmm. Is that um, why Iowa State doesn't play? Yeah, see, yeah. like, yeah, they, don't like a, they don't have a baseball team. Yeah, they don't have yeah. a baseball team, right? So they got to match it with something else. In yeah, order yeah. to bring it, they so got to bring another girl equal. sport. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, most schools have volleyball. So, like, that's, like, what, like, yeah, see, football's we got a, counter argument. We got a volleyball team, like, too, yeah. But then it's, like, you know, like, the schools up north, like, they got, like, ice hockey, like, stuff like that. So yeah, like it changes got, it up. Like, they don't yeah. play baseball. Like, this stuff like that. Which is probably why West Virginia doesn't have a softball team, man. It's cold. Yeah. Um, so we got his perspective on SEC for you. Mm-hmm. Not as deep. <laughs> only ten teams. Well, SEC has no. Yeah, two dude. Freaking that's tough. <laughs> they, they got a lot. So because we have what Tech, OU, Oklahoma State. C- oh, oh no, I'm saying that are good. Oh okay. <laughs> Depending on what's going on. Oklahoma hey, State. Hey, I thought hey, they were good recently. Hey. Uh, Oklahoma State's like, dude. They, they've been pretty good these past yeah, couple uh, years. Obviously. They've been pretty like, good. Like people like OU came out of nowhere, and when they got Skip Johnson, yeah, crazy. Yeah, uh, Tech came good. out of nowhere for like the past like. They weren't good, but like the past five years, yeah, they just made it. Yeah, a dude. Yeah, powerhouse. Then, uh, depending on what kind of Texas you get, you got Texas. Um, yeah, I'd say like. How was it playing in like big football? I loved it, man. It was Division One baseball at the highest level, and I liked it because um, we were always coming down to Texas to play at TCU, Baylor. So I knew my family would come and see me. Mm-hmm. And they made us like three years in a row. Oh, Sheesh. dude! I, I, I think it's senior years on the first year they lost. Damn, to, ran, uh, huh? to Texas? Yeah. Was it hey, bro, it, you better yeah, go back and no. check was that. <laughs> you better go back. Yeah, bro, I never check lost a series to him. Never lost a series to him. Check the tapes. Depending on what kind of series. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 go check that. But yeah, I never lost a series to him. Tech was really good, man. We would have some dog fights with Tech. Uh, I just know they dominated us my freshman year. They were pretty good. Um, Kansas State, they were okay. Um 
field was cold, man. Field was cold up there. The Jayhawks, they were, they weren't bad. They were pretty good. They they were kind of sneaky. Um, other than that, they just there's dudes everywhere. It's not like the SEC where there's like every team's like kind of pretty much yeah. stack sack. But the thing is that there's a lot of pitching. We got. I feel like the Big Twelve always has really good pitching. That's usually what Texas has in no hitting. Oh, but, dude. I mean, the past yeah, couple of years. Yeah, the pitching's like always shit. been really good. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm being honest. It's like, it is. It is. It like, what the, like, we have, like, we always talk about all the time, like, you're the University of Texas. Yeah, like, you, you should, should be, be the best of the best yeah, yeah, in the yeah, sport, yeah. Yeah. in my opinion. You have the money that comes in from the boosters got no every year, and we're, like, always the one and two, like, for revenue-wise. Mm. So it's like, yeah, what's missing? Yeah. What, what? Why? I don't understand why we can't win in baseball, football, bat. Like it just. Uh, I just, don't know. just no history. That's why. No, there's history. <laughs> it's like y'all like Michigan though, you know, just mm. kind of just whatever. Wow. Who would we Michigan? We Go blue. The other day. Not a Texas fan. Not a Texas really? fan. Really? Hey, we already know it's OU DNA in here. Ah, Anyways. big boomer. <laughs> big boomer. Hey, hey, back to them. Big boomer. <laughs> yeah. Um, did oh, you Did you get a chance to play against SEC teams? Um, I don't think I ever did. Did you get a chance to play against Big 12 teams? Actually, no. I didn't play any Big 12 no, teams. No, yeah, I mean, in the regional, yeah. Like even, that's Lucky what I'm saying, like even in the regional. Yeah, yeah, in playoffs, yeah, in playoffs we did. Uh, let's see, we got A&M. Um, did they, beat them? They knocked us out, dude. Walk off granny, son. Walk off granny. You didn't yeah. see the video? Bottom nine. Bottom nine. They that's don't know, crazy. I know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that, though. I know. So. But yeah, so uh, if y'all if y'all haven't seen it yet, it's Don't probably, go watch it. It's probably everywhere. That's crazy. We, I still see it till this that day. Happened, well, that even happened in the, day. in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah. Lucan, Lucan Baker. The yeah. The was playing third base. Or was your cat? You were playing third base. Was I was playing third year. base, yeah. Almost broke his neck. Watching the no, ball go. Bro, he, so he, cleared, he cleared the ballpark. Yes. For real? It's it's they a did, it's a they, minor league stadium for the Dodgers. Uh, okay, I think it's yeah, a yeah. double A, I think. This is in Oklahoma or? in Oklahoma yeah, City. Okay, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, where yeah. the Big Twelve tournament is. Yeah. Bro, so we go down like nine one. That game was crazy. Nine one off the red. Yeah, the first year. And I and I'm like, it's a Big Twelve championship. Like, <laughs> this is over. <laughs> Smack. Yeah. No, these shoes filthy. Y'all, they were gross. And uh, sure enough, we just kept digging away, digging away, knocks after knocks. We look back and I think it's in the eighth inning. We're winning like 10 to 11, 11 to 10. We're like, oh, all right, yo, we, we just got to get six more outs, man. Six more outs and we got this. I think uh, we get an out and this is like top nine. So we got one more chance to hit. Uh, but we get an out. We get somebody on. I think it's like a pick. Then Lucan comes in and we get down to like 3-0. And he's won 3 0. Yeah, 3 0. <laughs> if I'm looking, I'm yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 3 0 or 2 0, but it was it was hitters' counts regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was hacking, threw him a fastball. It was supposed to be away. You can see the video catch at the time. Ray sets away. Um, our boy Blake was throwing closer. Why y'all call me like that, bro? I know, man. He's <laughs> my boy. Sorry, sorry about the boy. Hey, sorry about Blake. My boy is my boy. <laughs> but yeah, man, and just. Lucan got a hold of it, man. This ball, that ball was I've, some I've never flat seen on one side. Or oh, what? dude, it cleared the entire stadium. There's a hotel in the back, like left center. That's crazy. Uh, Nuke. Like, it's so, like to it's, win it, it was just literally just one of those. Like, as soon as you, as soon as you oh saw yeah, it, as soon as you saw it, like, look. dude, you should have seen that. Yep. They all just hopped out the rails, ah, oh, screaming. I'm like, I was like, Sheesh. dang. But yeah, same thing at, in the regional my senior year against A and M. It's the game, the elimination game, to go to the championship game. And we were supposed to double dip Duke if we, if we would have won. And, uh, this your friend, what year was this? This was senior year, senior year? when we hosted. And, um, yeah, we're, we're winning again. It was like 9-1, to one, we're up, 8-1, to one, whatever. And Wait, did that happen back-to-back -back years? Didn't you lose off a walk-off at Wake Forest? Yeah, we did. It wasn't Golly. really. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't really a walk off. Time, it wasn't bro. really a walk off. It was just like a knock. Close you know? out the game one time. Uh, yeah. 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 What we doing? It was tough, bro. It was yeah. tough. Um, but uh, yeah. So we ended up having a bunch of errors, walk people. You know, it leads to runs, and then it's like nine to four in the fourth and the fifth. We're like, sorry, we still got a lead. One of the outfielders. Backside grand slam, right center just barely clears. We're like, what? We're like, like this is a game yeah. now. Shout yeah. Out. So then we're like, all right, we got to answer. We score a couple runs. 
So obviously we're up by three. It's bottom ninth. Base is juiced. They hit two grand slams off y'all. They beat us with two grand slams throughout the game. They, that's it what they beat damn, us with. Two bro. outs, three two, what right? The yeah, yeah. I mean, like, this, like, is like, this is like this, this is the, what the you backyard. dream of. Yeah, this, this, this is the backyard. This is, this is, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. like two outs, three two. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm like weird. five years old. I'm talking to myself like this is it. Three two count, yeah, bottom nine to win the game. This is me in the backyard. Um, got our closer and slider guy, and they're like spitting on all his sliders. He's pounding fastball, so he gets out, gets in there. Throws a slider, 3-2 count. The guy just sat on it, man, got, put a good swing on it, hits it up to left, and I, like, the video you can see, I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to watch it. I, like, hang the head, <laughs> and I just, like, start walking off because I, I knew it in, in our field. If you hit it left field, there's, like, a little jet stream, blows the left. I'm like, man, that might carry out of here. So at that point, we are just hoping, like, it'll just clip the, the top wall. of the wall, the clip wall, the top please. of the wall. And it just cleared, and it was like a movie. It just slow mo. All you heard was cheering, and I'm just walking off, and like they're going crazy on home plate. Ooh it? man! I got a question. Okay, because mm. like at that moment, that's like the end of your college career. That's it, right? dude. I mean, like it's over. Like yeah. there's no more yeah. baseball in college. Like, yeah. Thinking instant about that, tears. Or was it just yeah, like, instant tears. Because that's all that right. came. Like as soon as he made contact, I'm like, that's it, dude. It's I like, can't. I'm never yeah, gonna wear like, this uniform again. Yeah. Yeah. So it was hard. So like, uh, you can't see in the video, but I like back up, and I'm like sitting against the pad. And oh, and they're celebrating. Yeah, I'm sitting against the pad, just like home. sitting there, like this is it, man. That that was the last time I get to wear the gold and blue. Was it instant tears or was it like no, nah, like no, nah, in like the locker room? Yeah, shit? no, it was it was kind of tears whenever I started hugging the guys. Yeah, that's when it. Hits. AK, like my my roommate, my boy, came and hugged me, and he's like six six, so I, big Barry just wrapped me around. And then Sam, we hugged our pitcher. It's like, hey, it's not your fault, man. Like, good pitch, dude. Good swing. It is what it is. But, yeah, it was just, like, the fact that I wasn't going to hang out with those guys that often anymore. You know, everyone has their own lives. You graduate, you do your thing. Because it's, away. like, even All for that. football, yeah. once, you're, once, you're, once you know you're going to the draft, like, after that last game, you got to go. Like, you got to start training. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, yeah you got to yeah. start getting ready. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, like, I guess for football and basketball, it's a little different because they have, like, pro days. Then the basketball has, like, the rookie thing they do before the draft to, yeah. like, raise your draft stock or, like, just see them in person. Baseball, you just – Well, I, I, I think for those two sports, um, the draft's a little more valuable because there's only a few rounds. Like, for NBA – Baseball, there's only – I mean, uh, basketball, there's only two. There's only yeah, two rounds, and, and then seven, NFL's seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's 40. Or there used to be 40 for the yeah for the MLB. And then this year, I think they're cutting it back to, to 20. Or that's 20 good. or 30. That's yeah, good. they're they're downsizing yeah, it to some better. extent. Um, well, it's a little bit different because you have to. Because you have so, like yeah, there's so many teams. You have to fill all three minor league yeah. teams, and then like people from the minor leagues are gonna get, like it's just yeah, it's just that. Um, and then they cut uh, they cut the league. They cut some teams from the minor league side. Yeah, forty teams got forty cut teams from got minor side. cut from like the teams. Mm -hmm. Before we get into that, do you have anything you want to add? Or anything um, else? nah. I mean, this is a good transition point for like that like, minor league ball, like all that stuff. So I got questions for that, but I don't have any more questions. <clears throat> Um, so college is done. Mm. Both y'all get drafted. You? 18th round. No, but where, where'd you go? Uh, Diamondbacks. Arizona Diamondbacks. What's the minor league team called? Uh, I played in Hillsboro um, this last year. Hillsboro Hops. That was a, the, the short season affiliate. So like rookie ball. Um, that's where everyone goes. Like, well, not everyone, but most of the new draft guys will go into like a short season yeah. because we're playing uh, during the same time. So I think we played like 80, 84 games or something in like 90 days. Yeah. Round in, where'd you go? So, same thing. I, I got drafted in the eighth round by Chicago White Sox. And uh, so I started out in Arizona, and then I think I played like 10 games, and then they put me up in the Pioneer League, with, which was in Great Falls, Montana. And it was the Voyagers. And that's where I was. That was short season. And um, yeah, it was fun, man. It's, it's, yeah, that's a blast. Yeah, it's an experience for sure. And um, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. Just understanding the game and, like, you're with high-level players. You get to see them. And then you're like, all right, I'm there too. You know, I'm here. It's kind of like a moment where you don't really understand yet until, like, you start playing. And you're like, like oh, I'm playing professional right. baseball. Yeah, yeah like, it's crazy. Like, I got yeah, a chance to it, go like, up. Like, up right on you. It's not something where it's like, oh, okay, like, let me let me get in here. Let me sneak in by. And No, it's like, all right, I'm here. Let's go. Let's go play. Let's go do this thing. Before we get a deep – and deeper into that, we're going to give a shout-out to our sponsor. This ad is brought to you by Anchor, not the ones you put on your boat. 
if you guys haven't heard of Anchor, this is a distributing website that is known for getting your audio out. If you're creative, you want to distribute it to you know the bigger sites, Spotify, Apple, Google Play, you know, etc. The main ones. This is the app and website for you. All you got to do is download Anchor.fm for free, either on your browser or on your phone. It's in the App Store. Once you do that, you'll be able to distribute all your audio files to all those platforms. Anchor also helps monetize and show your viewers and where they're listening from. For example, we have a viewer and listener from Ireland. Didn't know you liked our podcast, but shout out to you. Hopefully you like Conor McGregor. We love him as well over here at Opinionated yes, Podcast. Sir. And with that being said, if you're creative and want to get started, it's super easy to do. It didn't take us that long at all. All we do is upload our audio description episodes. You can listen to them as series, change your artwork, all that stuff. And it'll upload it for you to Spotify, Apple simultaneously within that day, within the first 24 hours. Again, all you got to do, anchor.fm for free. What's the difference in like playing college, like high school to college? Because I know like some people like, like, they stop playing college like bro, it's just not the same like it's harder and like it's just more strict and like stuff like that so like what was, what was the difference between high school and college ball then college ball and then where you're at now i think for me um from high school to college it was like the time management piece because you're not only playing baseball like baseball is a lot harder the game's faster yeah. people are bigger but like now you're going to class, you have mandatory study hall, like you have to eat. Feed yourself. There's all this extra stuff that's going on. On top of that, yeah. being in a different environment. Um, like for me, I was like 25 hours away from home. Like this is not like I can be like, hey mom, yeah, do something for me real Same. quick. It's like, you're on your own for a little bit. Um, but going into pro ball, I think the transition was way easier because all that extra stuff got weeded out. And it was just back to baseball. Yeah. Like you're just traveling on the road, taking care of yourself and then playing ball every yeah. single day. It's like really simplified, honestly. It's like I wake up, get to the field, eat, lift, do my thing, play ball, go to go bed, home, do it and again. go home and do it again. But in college, it's like, okay, you got class, then you got study hall, then you got to get food, then you got to go to another class, then you got to go to practice, and then you got to, somewhere in there you got to lift, usually like early in the mornings. Then after practice, you got probably got to go back to study hall because there's a test, something going on. So there's always like, it's just like the little extra stuff like that, that kind of like, just wears you it down. It wears you down. Yeah. Man, it's nothing just, worse, yeah. bro. Nothing worse than like, I would do this sometimes, like late in the game, 0 for 5, like bad game going on. And like I'm hungry, we're winning or whatever. And then I'm thinking, like, I got homework, man. Like, yeah. it's almost midnight. I got to go do homework when I get home. Like, exactly. man, I had a bad game. I got to wait, you know, another four days to go play again. Um, and that's how it was in college. But yeah. in pro ball, it was like, Hey, next day yeah. you're saddling up, bro. Like, yeah. 0 for 5, all right, you're in again. Like, go get it. You know what I mean? There's no time to kind of reflect and do all that. But I think it simplified it and made it easier, in my mm -hmm. opinion, for it. It's less things that, that you got to think about, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not thinking about this test that I got Only revolve around baseball. Next that's week, it. yeah, that's all it is. How's it, be, how's it feel like? I know, like, minor leagues have, like, real small towns and stuff. So, like, how's that? Like, going to all these small towns, like, even living in the small towns, like, does it even matter because you're just playing ball? Yeah, so for, for my experience, um, we were right outside Portland, Oregon. So we yeah, had a huge okay. fan base. Yeah. Um, nah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, we had like a turf field. We had two buses for every road trip. Um, so you had a little bit of extra space and stuff like that. And then we would draw like five or 6,000 people. Um, and then That's also- for miners. Oh, no, yeah. it was sick. And then yeah. the coolest part was um, Nike was started there in Beaverton. Mm -hmm. And so we'd get to go to the Nike store once a week um, and you'd get like 60% off. And then they Dang. sponsored the team. So we had like crazy. <laughs> this guy yeah. had the hook up. Hey, this, this is insane. Hey, we had, like, we had like we had like ten ten unis, all Nike, and then um we got so wow. the new, yeah. so the so the new Harachis that came out this year, we got to test them out and like the Nike reps came in and they were like, Hey, let's know. The field, don't even get, get drafted, I know, they, they, it was sick. That's it was crazy. a good setup boy. And, and the the bad thing about it was everyone was like, Hey, like that's the top of minor league ball from here on out. It's just going down. Yeah, well, that's the thing. See, I, mine was opposite. I was in Montana in Great Falls, small town, dude, nothing. It was like all hills. It was beautiful, beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, if you didn't get to spread that day, if you didn't get to <laughs> eat at the end of the game. You're not eating. Oh, you're getting McDonald's. Like, you're not getting anything good. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm saying McNice. <laughs> but it was nice, man. It was a cool experience. Um Definitely, like, another thing is, like, sometimes going from college to Pro Bowl, you you have it nicer a little bit with facilities, food, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it's kind of like, all right, I'm, I'm I'm here to work, man. I'm here to get my stuff done. Do you have facilities in the minors? 
Uh, they're, I mean, they're nice, but I just Are don't they nice think. Than college. I feel like not. No, no, not, no, not, not all of them. Not so, some of them will be, but some most of them. The, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean like, well, because I mean, you're playing at big power five schools. You got money oh, coming man, in there, yeah, private money dude. coming in uh, to build those things, and you have a bunch of resources. Yeah. Minor league ball. I mean, uh, it's nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not as lavish as yeah. some of the other stuff. They don't have as much money to just blow out. You know, blow out on a fat locker room. You yeah, know, like yeah, stuff like that. At a, in a rookie league. How was both for both of you? How was y'all's first year? Because y'all are going in since we, y'all didn't have a season this season, so y'all going yeah. in technically yeah. your second year. Second when year, game? yeah. First how, was y'all's, how was y'all's first year? Whether if it was y'all spent all the time, did both y'all spend all y'all's time? In yeah, yeah, year? yeah. Mm-hmm. I did. Rookie, was it called, singular yeah. or advanced day? Uh, I, well, so we were in rookie ball, which was like advanced rookie ball. Yeah, um, same pretty thing. Much is where it was. I'd be, I was in the same. So, because um, it's just a shortened season, so we only, we were only supposed to play, I think, seventy games, yeah. whereas the regular minor league season would be one hundred forty. Because you're going from co- your college, yeah, right to the draft to all right, where you're reporting in five days, yeah, and then you go play in that. Report that five season. days. That's crazy. Dude, Basically, I got drafted on like a Wednesday, and the like scouts were like, "Hey, can you fly out tonight?" Yeah, to Arizona, and I was like, "I'm <laughs> yeah. in Knoxville. Like, I have to move all Ex- my stuff." 20 hours back yeah that's what I said they were like hey we need you out uh, in in like two days and I was like dude I have to drive all the way back to Texas with all my stuff they were like all right we'll give you till Saturday then yeah that's what happened did they pay for the flight or anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. after that that, it was like yeah yeah. they emailed it to you go ahead go first class Nah, nah, bro, come on, nah, man. Come on, but the journey is everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like the minor leagues isn't all that you know glamorous and lavish and stuff. But I think that's what makes it like special is that everyone's in the same boat, right? Yeah. So when there is like a shitty circumstance, it's like everyone's in the same boat trying to move up. Though, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it kind of brings you a little bit closer to all the guys you're grinding mm-hmm. with day in and day out. So it's a lot of fun, man. It is. It is, man. It's a, it's like a big. Uh, it's not. So for some people, it's a big culture shock because, like, now you're meeting Dominicans, you're meeting Cubans, and it's like you get a taste of what they do and what they like, like yeah. the food that they like to make and stuff. And same thing for them. They're learning it the same way, and it's, like, really fun. It's enjoyable. The locker room's always fun. It's always energetic with those guys, so it it's really cool. Well, uh, back to the question, how was, y- how was y'all's first year of rookie ball like? Mm. Whether y'all did good or your team did good or just a fun experience overall, like yeah, for that? well, how for me, I mean, I, I kind of painted the picture. I had like a real good setup for the area I was mm-hmm. at, um, the organization I was playing with, and then uh, we were lucky enough. We actually went and won the whole thing, oh, that's what's up. Um, which was a cool, a cool little experience to to kind of go through. And we for just got our ring, yeah, 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 yeah huge, huge, rings. huge ring. Mm, that's what's up. I don't, I probably won't ever wear it or anything, yeah. but it's got like a case and everything that came in. Um, yeah, it's dope. just a cool yeah. little little. You made a few little, little, little highlights for them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a good little broadcasting thing and stuff too. Um, the Diamondbacks they even made us like a little uh, montage and stuff, like highlight clips um, when when the COVID thing broke out to kind of just keep the guys mm-hmm. going, like. Yeah, because we had, I mean, like a four month off season, mm-hmm. just started to get back into it, and then COVID happened. They sent us back home. Yeah, and so for since y'all won, do y'all get like extra money or anything? I mean, you get like two or three extra weeks of pay for however long you're playing in yeah. the, in the play, uh, playoffs and yeah. stuff. But um, there's no like twenty thousand dollar bonus because I know like nah, yeah. you get with for if you win incentives and you know, stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so you had a good first season. Yeah, yeah, cool. super fun, man, super fun. Um, Everything I expected and more, so that's good. I got no complaints about it. Yeah, I would have to agree, man. I it was eye opening, and um, learned a lot too. It's crazy because at each level that you get to, there's always like another book. You know, there's always yeah. more to learn. So it was the same thing. Um, used to catching different guys, learning who they are, learning everything about a whole another human being. You know, I'm with guys for three to four years that I know everything about. Then it's kind of starting the whole process, and it's just they're all over the world. But other than that, my first year was fun, man. We didn't make the playoffs, but just being able to say I was playing pro ball and having fun and enjoying it and learning at the same time, it's like, dude, this is sick. Like, I'm did doing learn, I'm doing what I wanted to do. Did, did you all learn a lot more, like, in the minors than you did in college, or they just kind of expect you to like, know stuff? Yeah, I think uh, there's a little bit of both. I, I, I think in the minors – uh, it all becomes a lot more like nitpicky, right? right? And it's like, hey, like everyone's obviously a very good player, but if you do this one little thing a little bit different, it'll elevate your game yeah. just that much more. And it kind of, you know, snowballs into making you a really great player. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, from my experience in pro ball, a lot of the coaches played baseball and stuff. And so from pro ball to uh, 
college, the on the professional side, it's it's more of like a recommendation stuff that they give you, right? It's like, hey, I think this could help you. Yeah. But at the end of the yeah. day, it's your career. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like they're not gonna take credit if you have success and they won't take the downfall if it doesn't work for yeah. you. Um, and I like that a lot. It's it's a lot more flexible for you, right? You get to take little nuggets of like, hey, I like that info you just gave me. I'm gonna mm -hmm. use that and it makes me better. Or hey, I tried that, it didn't work. I'm not gonna do that anymore. Um, and that's kind of the coaching staff that we had. And I think that helps me uh, more often than not because it just helps me kind of evolve to be a better player. Whereas in college, it's like, hey, this is my ship, my team. You're doing it how I say yeah. You know what I mean? You don't really have that leeway. So when you guys got drafted, did you did you get to get taken into the facilities or like, did you get a tour? Like, how is that? Like, just like, for example, if you like went to Chicago or you went to Phoenix, like mm -hmm. just being able to be like, wow, like going to Chase Field or just going wherever and just like stepping out there. And it's like, it's like you're at a, you're at the show, like you're looking at it, you know, like, <clears throat> did you guys get to do any of that? Any of the tours or like, is, does it not really happen? Well, what's crazy about that is I, I actually had an ex-girlfriend in, in college. I lived in Chicago oh, wow. and she took me to my first Chicago White House game, like my sophomore year. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah so I got to see the field. Shoot. They played the Padres. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of yeah. crazy. It was kind of <laughs> crazy. But uh, out, yeah, so I got out. to see the field and all that. And then um, honestly, I didn't get like a big tour of like when I first got there. They were just kind of sending me like, hey, you go get your physical, go get this, like get your papers done. This is where you got to go. So it's not like they're taking you like lavishly through like here's our locker room here's this it's like you kind of like all right here's the locker room you're walking by getting more papers done you know getting your stuff turned in whatever they need from you and um then after that you, you kind of just pick it up as you go it's like all right well there's a there's a clipboard and before you check it at least for us the white Sox, um it, they would tell you like all right at 6 a.m we're doing this 6 30 catchers are here seven so like there was always a, a schedule. plan, a schedule yeah. that you had to follow. So you knew what was going to happen for that day, and then they had the one for tomorrow up. So you knew what was happening the next day. And it was just up to you, like, all right, I got to be on time. My hitting group's this. I got to show up at this time. So you just learn where stuff is. You ask, hey, I need a – where's the cafeteria? Where's this? And you just pick it up as you go. Yeah, same thing. I mean, it was all real quick. Yeah. Um, like, I flew out there Saturday, did my physical, signed on Sunday, and then flew out to Portland on – uh, Monday yeah. at like 5 a.m. So it was like showed up to the spring training facility and stuff like that. Um, but so yeah, it was it was real go, fast. Yeah, and then it. yeah, one day of practice and it was like all right, like short season started. Go. Like y'all are playing games, you know, get in there. Just like all right, here we go. And how uh, like physically draining is baseball? Oh man, I would. I mean, I would argue. Yeah, that it might be different for you since you're a yeah. catcher. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. I mean, you're you're doing stuff the whole game. For Dude, me, I, I, may go I was three exhausted, games and not get a man. Ball. I'd never played that many games in a row in my life. Like, I had just caught sixty college games, and I'm like, that's a lot. Like, I was hurting, and then they gave me they gave me a break, so I got to stay in Arizona and like I didn't play for like two weeks. I was just chilling there, like, hey, you can just sit, like, relax. Like, we know you just hosted a regional, and I was like, well, I kind of want to play, man. I want to get out there. Yeah, yeah. But I knew like my body, like it was just in pain. Those two weeks helped a lot, and then right after that, I got moved up to Montana and then I think my first series there they were like hey I got off the bus and they were like hey you're gonna catch three and sit one and that's the rotation for the rest of the season I'm like what I'm like oh now we're grinding now we're going <laughs> catch three sit one catch three sit one for the rest of the season and at the end of the season dude I was dragging like I had never experienced that many yeah. games so now I know though but like that's what the off season was for, you know, training for, yeah, that, prepare for that, preparing ready, for that, yeah. get my body ready for that long journey, that long season. Okay. Yeah, well, for me, uh, not as much uh, physically draining, just because like I'm not having to move as much and stuff throughout the game, but more mentally, just because I have to, like even if I don't get a ball for three games, I have to be locked in every pitch as if that that ball's coming to me on that pitch, right? So it can be kind of tiring that way. Um, the physical aspect is a little more of like the bus rides and stuff mm. and just a continuous <laughs> yeah, non-stop of it. Like for us, I think uh, when I was in Hillsborough, our, our longest trip was like uh, 11 hours or something. And so we'd play a game, let's say on Monday, and the game would be over at midnight and we'd mm. leave, right? So we'd leave at midnight, we'd get into wherever we were going, like Boise, uh, and we'd get in at 11 a.m. and you'd check into the hotel and then they'd be like, hey, bus leaves at one to go to the field. So you'd get in at 11 a.m., you'd check in and sleep for like two hours and yeah. try and get some food and then 
game again at 7 p.m. that night, you know, and it's like – It's a grind. That's the most – Y'all got there six hours early? Yeah, for the game. Yeah, Whoa, no, no, no. So, like, we would we would leave, like, from uh, the hotel at 1 and drive over there, yeah, and just, like, get into the to the locker room stuff to start the, the road series and everything. Uh, and then, I mean, the locker room's there. No offense to Boise, just mm. – It's Boise. <clears throat> not it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not it. But I think, actually, since Boise State started up their baseball program – they're supposed to have a whole new venue going on in there. Uh, but then they got the axe after the COVID season. So I think the minor league team is just going to take it over now. Dang. But that's the only physical part that I would say is just sitting up like this for 11 hours yeah. and having to go play the next day. I feel like it's just hard for kind of both y'all. Like, especially for him, it's like at, at, you're in the minors. Like you, it's everybody for themselves, basically. And um, – you don't want to miss a game because mm-hmm. if you miss yeah. a game, like – Get wallet pips on the same person. spot. Yeah. Yeah. If he yep. comes three for three, three home runs. He might stay in there. Yep. That's why he'll be back yeah. Monday. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the hard part. Like, yeah, you yeah your good. body's like, take a break, but you're like – You got to do it. That's the grind. I mean, but that's what makes it worth it. And at the end of the day, like, even if you're not making all that much money, like, it's for the chance to make a lot of money and take yeah. care of yourself and your family for times to come. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean it's life-changing money. Yeah. And so um, I think that's what – I mean, I, I can't speak for everyone if money's their motivation and stuff, but I think taking care of their family, taking care of themselves, and yeah. not having to work uh, by playing a game, yeah. I mean, that's a big – Yeah. Why would you not, right? Would you like, not? when you put it in that perspective, it's like – I'll sleep on the bus for 15 hours this week. And I, then at the care. end of the day, too, you find out that, like, it's the dudes that really just love the game, man. Mm-hmm. Like, when it comes down to it, that guy that's, like, taking that extra GB or that extra batting, it, it's the dude that's like, man, this guy really has a heart for it, you know? And then it kind of, like, the other guys just kind of, like, feed out, you know? It's like, oh, I just want the money. I just want the fame. And they, they'll, like, yeah. kind of stop working. And you can out. see it, what too. Oh, man. Yeah. It's the opportunity to, to be a professional baseball player. It's something that, like, I love, man. It's, you're, you're not in, you're like at this. It's not money for you. Oh no, like, dude! The chance that I can go out there any day of the week, call myself a professional baseball player, and go do what I love, that's it. And it took me a while to understand that, man. Because at first, it's just like, oh, I just want the money. I want the money. But then it's like you sit back and you kind of like understand, like someone out else out there has it worse than you do. Like, let me enjoy the time that I can do this because I can't play this for long. My number's gonna get called at a certain point. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, someday. So like, yeah. Let me enjoy it to the max that I can and just go out there and do what I can, do what I love for fun. Yeah, for me, I think it's just not not having to work. Like, I get to – like, this is my job. Like, other people are doing, you know, like, real-world things, and I'm showing up to the baseball field. And, like, my worst day at work is if I go 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts or something. You know what I mean? It's a big bad day, though. Yeah, yeah. it is a bad day. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're going back. Those. We're going, going back. Like, like, I got to change my whole swing now. Yeah. Like. But also, too, um, the platform, man, like – it's kind of crazy because you're in a small town, right? Yeah. You kind of think you're nobody on the totem pole and stuff. And then you go give a kid your autograph or a pair of batting gloves Ooh. or a broken bat and they just blow up, right? Just done with joy. And it's like, dang, that's pretty cool that, yeah. like, someone wants something from me like that, right? Like, I could do something for someone else and it means that much to them. Mm-hmm. Like, how long is that going to last, right? Yeah. So I think kind of knowing that at some point, it's, that's not how it's going to be. At some point, you might just be an average Joe walking down the road and no one wants you to sign anything, right? Yeah. But for right now, uh, that's why, I mean, I, I know Ivan does the same thing, but when you're signing autographs and stuff, because some guys don't like it, right? They don't yeah. like doing that and taking that time and stuff. But uh, for me, having that platform where people want to see who you are and, and they want something from you um, kind of just keeps me going, motivates me a little bit. Yeah. How much money y'all got? <laughs> Damn. Just straight out the gate. Out the gate. As the IRS. Know, like, a, a, not a, a lot of people don't know, like, you get paid shit in the minors. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah, don't good. get because my um, I told my parents that y'all were coming on, and then they mentioned something about um, money. I was there, oh, because she asked me like how do uh, how do they afford all the things? Like they the miners pay for everything. Like, but I mean y'all when, Honestly, when, it, when it's like off season time, like yeah, you're you on your own. Got, oh like, yeah, you're on your you, own. Because I think yeah. you told me one yeah. time you only got like. $1,200 a month or something like that? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think that's, I think they're changing it up, though. I'm pretty sure they're increasing it to, like, minimum wage now. Yeah, there's a lawsuit soon. out, yeah. uh, oh, I think, real? about the whole thing. That's good. Uh, yeah. What's, what's, that's what's minimum thing? wage for y'all? Because I know, like, my, I mean, MLB is, like, 570 or something like that. Yeah, the, the league minimum is, like, 580, yeah. almost 600,000 yeah. for, uh, for the major leagues. But 
for us, you're getting like twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, what was wait? Y'all are gonna get minimum wage for MLB, or do y'all have your own minimum? No, wage? no, no. Like no, we're no, not no. gonna get the minimum. Like, like we're not gonna get the league minimum. Yeah, it would be yeah. like a working like it would be 60K like a, a year. Or something. Yeah, oh, okay. Type yeah. Of, like, well, that, that's minimum that's, wage. Like more like time. actual decent well, money. Decent money. Yeah. Well, because I mean, for some guys, like they're trying to apply for a loan on a house, and it's like they, yeah. you only made five thousand dollars this year. Like, yeah. How, like <laughs> you ain't getting a loan for five thousand yeah, dollars, especially know, like. like the Dominican guys or the Puerto Rican, well, basically the overseas the guys, yeah. not overseas, but like the foreigners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they got to still go home after the season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Those fights ain't cheap. No, 100%. No, yeah. um, and so I think I think the way the layout is supposed to be is like you kind of live off your signing bonus is pretty much how, mm -hmm. how most people do. But during the season, the team takes care of most expenses. Yeah. Like, like you're, you're in a host family you, and they yeah, feed you. you, housing, so. travel. And they, I mean, you don't really so have basically any expenses. How it was in Cape? Yeah, and then like yeah. most of the time, like the host families, they'll give you the, they'll give you a car, so like you can just ride around, whatever, like transport yourself. So yeah, I mean, yeah. unless you pay for like your phone or like you have your own car, yeah, or something like that. I unless mean, you got really your really own expenses. payments that are on your own personal stuff, then yeah. honestly, you're kind of pocketing all that money, yeah. and you're not really. It's doing like what about like those training? Because like I see like y'all work out all the time together. So, like y'all have to pay for that on y'all's own, or y'all get the hookup. Like how's that go? Yeah, no, I mean, that's all uh, out-of-pocket stuff. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's reinvesting in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, at, so at this point, it's like, all right, I got to put this in myself so I can get to that level so later. I can make it, yeah. you know, make the actual money absolutely. later. It's like LeBron, and when, when he first came out, and was like, hey, I spend, what, a million? A million. Him and Russell Wilson yeah, right? It's like, okay. On body for nutrition. Uh, I mean, yeah, like they how make, they make 30 yeah. million exactly. in return. Exactly. How you know? often is he hurt? You know, like, man, plays. He posts. He invests himself to get more money at yeah, the end of the, the day. So, run, yeah. so, yeah, most of that's on our own, man. But I know a lot of guys, um, they live off, like, lessons. So, like, they'll go back, hey, I'm a pitcher. I'm doing lessons for six months. And it's really good pay. Like, that's what it, you told me. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Like, I have a bunch of catchers, and um, I'm always working with them, like, every week, once a time. Some, if somebody wants to work more, that's fine. Let's get more work in. And, um, yeah, or people get real jobs. People do, people do their thing. Yeah. And then some other people are like, hey, I'm going to go do this because not everyone can say I got six months off work, you know? So some people go live lavish, do their thing. Everyone's different. I know you, I don't know if you do it now. I know you speak Spanish, but how is it playing like the Dominican? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this man gets roasted. Oh, I get flamed. For real? I get flamed all what, the time. You're Hispanic, don't Jokingly, you yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, <laughs> there's, there's a huge Latin influence yeah. in the game, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, coming from all different you know countries and stuff like that but yeah that was actually like the first so when i signed i went to the spring training facility <laughs> like i have like business attire on i got my suitcase and everything and one of the coaches came up to me and was hey you know come with us and i was like shit i don't know <laughs> what this guy's saying dude so no, i tried no. to fake it you know and uh, he's like ah oh, like oh, you uh, he, knew, he knew he yeah, knew yeah just recently. exposed me that was the first the first <laughs> guy i met when i walked in i was like I was like, this is how pro ball is, man. This is not going to be good for me. But uh, that coach ended up being my manager uh, in Hillsborough. Super, super dope guy and stuff. So um, he just like makes money just jokingly. Yeah, all the time. Everyone does and stuff. So, um, but a lot of the Latin players they have to learn English because a lot of them don't know English. Yeah. So uh, I'll chop it up with them and help them out. Hey, como se dice? Uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever you know. So and, and they'll be like, hey, how do you say um, this? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you're getting it. Yeah. So um, it's cool, man. Uh, you get to see a, a lot of different walks of life, dude. You got. Some guys are 28 and they have families and stuff, mm -hmm. still grinding it out. And then the next day, like two spots over, you're playing with an 18 year old kid who just got signed for three million dollars or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, it's just it's different. I mean, everyone's got their own yeah. little own little niche and stuff. But that's kind of the beauty of it is you get to see different people playing for the same purpose. Do you think you'll learn Spanish? I hope. I have to take another class yeah. to graduate. <laughs> so. I want to learn um, just because I'm, I'm interested in it. Like, I yeah. want to be able to kind of connect culturally um, to some roots and stuff. But uh, it's just something I haven't dedicated enough time to and actually took seriously. But What about you? How's it for you? Uh, I mean, it works out just like you said. There's Spanish. Like, there's translators out there on the field. So, like, um, a manager will say something. All right, here's the yep. translator. Then he'll say it. And he'll, like – and I know both parts and – saying the exact same thing so it's like i'm saying i'm hearing two different speeches all the time but it's like that for other guys too and um you kind of get uh, stuck in a role where it's like helping them out because um just there's a barrier there they don't understand what's going on so then you get to know them more personally and who they are which is cool because like just like you said you get different culture shocks almost like oh, okay like this is the food that they like this is the snack like 
I know Cubans, now they don't like spicy food. They like it more sweet because they would see the salsa that I would put on my food and be like, oh, that's nasty. Nah, like, como te comes? Like, how do you eat that? Like, crazy stuff. And so, yeah, it's just little things you pick up like that, which is cool. There, there's like Dominican and Cuban. Mm. Their Spanish is a little bit different, right? Yeah, which is crazy because sometimes even me personally, I, I can't understand what they're saying. They just speak it so fast. Who speaks the fluid. fastest? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I want to say Puerto Ricans right now because we had two middle infielders that were Puerto Rican. Man, they had their own language. <laughs> I couldn't understand. They were always screaming. They were the guy, energetic dudes, man. That, that's like that's the crazy thing. Like even in the dugouts when you're watching the MLB, you're just like. Those guys are always just happy and just oh yeah, they're, no, oh, that's, like they're, I mean, they're literally they're, 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 oh, they're dude, funny yeah. as hell and they just be going and going and going and going. They they get mad if they're not in the starting lineup, man. And it's not because if they're doing well or bad. It's just they just want to play. Yeah, like, like that's they, they see the game differently. That's like it, they, dude. They enjoy it in a yeah. different way, but it rubs off on everybody. Like yeah. kind of it makes you like play. they'll play. Well, they'll play through injuries, through anything. They they just want to be on the field. Do you see it? Like all right, I forgot. There was a documentary I was watching. A while back, I don't even remember what it was, but once they got drafted for them to come over here, they have to take an English class and pass it. Do y'all think that we should, that y'all should have to take a? Because I mean, it's most Latin descent. Do you think you should have to take a Spanish class and pass it to like play as well? I know because like, I know like English is like the world language. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. You should, yeah. Like, you should know it, but like, yeah, as teammates. So know? they they do. I know in Arizona, the Americans had to take Spanish class once one one day a week as well. So, I mean, I know they. I don't know if it's like that for the Diamondbacks or if it for it's any other team like that. But I know for us, the Americans had to take Spanish class, and then obviously the Latins had to sp- take English once a week. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be a good idea. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind, and especially if you're learning like conversational stuff or stuff about baseball, because even like little instances. Um, like our pitching coach, he didn't speak Spanish, but if there was a pitcher who only spoke Spanish and no one on the infield uh, spoke Spanish, yeah, like you it. couldn't, you couldn't really talk to him. Like you'd have to have a translator come out there yeah. or, so usually it would be a player, right? Usually there'd be one player on the field that could speak. Yeah, I knew this, uh, uh, that's how they do it in like the major suit, like person that goes in my head is like Julio Horaez, straight from Mexico. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know how, uh, how they do it in the, in the majors or for like the, the Asian, um, pictures and stuff like that because yeah. a lot of the like the asian players that we have i mean they have their own translator that literally anywhere they go they, they uh know, they yeah, go with yeah, them yeah because i mean they don't know it's it's not like a common thing for someone yeah. to know like taiwanese or, or something like yeah. that you know so um but to answer your question i wouldn't i wouldn't mind doing that i don't think it's a bad idea yeah um yeah yeah no nah, not, not really um well um, one thing i wanted to ask you was like since covid happened how how much did that like mess up y'all's routine or like y'all's mindset or is that are y'all gonna have another season? Y'all mentioned that forty minor teams got cut. Did one of y'all teams get cut or like how did that go for y'all? Yeah, so I think one of everyone's team got cut at least. Yeah. Um, some organizations had a couple teams cut, um, but I don't know if y'all understand how like there's a lot of teams. I, in the I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, there's like you know triple A, double A. You got two single A's. Mm-hmm. We had two rookie balls. It was like single A and like advanced, advanced right? day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then we had two teams in the AZL and two teams in the Dominican. I mean, there's a lot of like yeah. hoops to jump through and stuff. Yeah. But um, I think for us, I mean, it didn't really affect us that much. I think if anything, it kind of benefited us um, just to give us more time to kind of figure stuff out. And um, I think it really kind of showed if you really liked the game or, or kind of how much you were taking it for granted, right? Because some days when you're in the dog days, you're like, ah, oh, dude, it's hot, yeah. I don't really want to play today. And then when you get it taken away from you for like a year and a half, you're like, you do anything to get yeah. out there and play in a real game right now. So um, I think it benefited us in that way to kind of give us a little bit more hunger uh, coming back. Yeah, that and it gave us more time to work on things too, man, like swings, throwing mechanics, anything. So it gave us more time to develop more of our game and become a better ball player, which is always nice, always getting more information, obviously. But – yeah, right now the itch, it's like I'm scratching at the neck to just yeah. get out yeah. there. You know? Like, oh man, I just so like we're facing live abs off these college guys because they came. For, He's not again for, for Christmas yeah. break all the time, bro. Damn. But like, all the time. But like we're in there, it's like oh, this is fun, man. We're facing live, and it's they're not pro guys, but still, man, it's the same guys that we just were. You know, they're hungry. They're like, all right, 
let me throw my best stuff and it's like all right it's a dog fight let's go get in it's there it's just competing like yeah it's just like you just miss that it's like 1v1 right here me and you like in front of people different is like the pitching and the monitors like facing the pitching because it's like obviously like high school you own it college it's harder because it's obviously like which is better and then you like minors and then you go to make like how much different like how much harder is it basically i think um i think getting into pro ball coming from the sec it was a little bit easier um just at like the rookie ball level you have really good pitchers but a lot of them are really young and kind of raw they're still trying to work on their, yeah, their stuff to be yeah. elite so like it's not as uh, f- fine. Like, yeah, it's not like yeah, like real and nice stuff. and developed. It's like a little shaky here and there. It gets rattled, stuff like that. So it's not as consistent. Well, and also, too, like some of the pitchers are going into starts, like working on things, right? It's yeah. kind of like, hey, yeah, don't just, worry so much about the results. Like we're yeah. trying to develop you at this stage, right? Like that's the whole goal yeah. of the minor leagues and everything. Um, and then on top of that, the umpires, like the umpiring gets a lot better. The zone shrinks a little bit. Because mm-hmm. um, the umpires, I think they work the same way the binders do. Like they get promoted and demoted mm-hmm. based yeah. on performance and stuff. Um, so I, we were just talking about this. This is like the first time that we've ever like talked to the umpires like, hey, man, like that's not the right call. Like you need to shake yeah. it up, bro. We're not yeah. playing for fun. Because in college, anymore. if you like chirp or say anything, it's like, hey, yeah, you, you say injected. another word, you're gone. Yeah. And yeah. then if you go, the head coach goes with you. Yeah, so, they so, go out there protect the players. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like now it's cool. It's like, hey, John, like you missed that one, and he's yeah. like, Ivan, you think I missed it? And it's like, yeah, yeah dude, I think did. you it's did. Cool. And he's like, and, it, and it's right. respect level, and it's yeah. A, and yeah, and it's they'll, like, they'll come back the next day, you know, like the same crews there, and they'll be, hey, man, yeah. like I did miss it, my bad. Yeah, like, yeah, because you know? they'll they'll go back and look at it too. They watch the film and break it down, and they'll do the same thing. They'll let you know, like, yeah, I did, or hey, I had that a strike, honestly. And it's just cool because it's just. You get to open heads, and they talk to you. You talk to them, and it's just like meeting new people consistently, man, and getting yep. more more knowledge throughout the game. They'll talk to you. There's guys that are, I've been doing this for 65 years, and you're like, what? You're like, Damn. Bro, yeah, yeah, you're like, a lifer, bro. You are a baseball lifer. Yeah, this is it. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, and it's like it's really cool, and that was one thing that I thought it was cool because I can just literally just sit there, hey, John, like, Why'd you punch me out in the third inning? Like, I don't think that was a good call. And it, it's just a conversation. It's not like, all right, well, you're out of here. You're gone. Is it easier? Do you think it's easier since you're a catcher and you don't, like, you, you're you behind the box the whole time, mm-hmm. so you kind of know the zone is easier to, like, hit? See, I I, I think it See, is. I, I, w- I think the catcher should be the best hitter. I w- I w- but they're – I don't know. Historically, man. they're known not to be good hitters. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't know why. I just I figured that well, they would be. I, honestly, as a catcher, and I, I, I talk about this. I think I mentioned this a while ago. We kind of like psych ourselves out just because we know like sequencing and like this is what you want to do if you see this. So like, our, this is just me personally. Some, some other guys might not even like do this, but there'll be times where I'm like, I go up there with a plan. I'm like, hey, I'm sitting fastball. This guy's been throwing a lot of fastballs, whatever. And uh, I'm start looking for a location, and he starts off with something different, and then I'll change my plan because I see that, and it's like, oh, okay, well, oh one. What would I throw me? Yeah, it's like oh one breaking ball, and then I'll start. What would I call? Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when I psych myself up, self out, and then it's like paralysis by analysis, man. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know and what And then I'm like doing I'll, now. I'll sit there, get frozen, take a pitch, strike two, and now it's. Zero oh. balls, two strikes, and I'm telling myself, all right, time to grind. Yeah, yeah. Time to see if I can get do one you, out there. Do you have to go up there with a the plan? Yeah, I mean. It helps, man. Yeah. It's, it, it's like going up there with a little bit of knowledge, like what it's you're It's kind of like playing blackjack or poker, yeah. right? Like you stick with the same little game for enough times. Yeah. Like hopefully you'll start winning. It's, yeah. it's crazy because I watched that uh, Derek Jeter documentary, and like he knew everything about every pitcher. So yeah, he'll well, go up there, and like if somebody was on deck or if a new any came as a new pitcher – Tell them, hey, this guy throws this. This guy throws it. Like, it's well, and, it, and it's much easier at the big league level because yeah. it's all established, right? Like, those guys are what staying those guys there. Are throwing, like, they're throwing. Not a lot of guys are moving in and out of there, you know? Well, so. and, and, like, their stuff is so elite for most of them. Like, they're not even trying to pick, like, hitters' weaknesses. It's more of, like, I'm going to throw to my strengths. You try yeah. and hit it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, in the minor leagues, you got guys going up and down every other day, yeah. you know, or it's just some random. So you're team. not yeah. seeing them consistently. Or a brand new college guy just got drafted. It's yeah. like, we got no numbers on him. Like, we don't know anything this guy throws. Yeah. So, Is um, it, is it, is it, for uh, y'all's path to be differently, but do you think it'll be an easy path for you or a hard path for y'all to like? To roll through? To go, go up. I think I'm going to be a journeyman, if I'm being honest. I think mine's going to be a grind the whole way through. I think that's how it's been. 
for me, even since high school, that's just kind of how I've always viewed my path. Like, I look trying at, to make varsity, going into college. See, I, 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 I agree with situation. that too, man. I agree with that too because it's been like a, yeah, like I, I got to go to Division One and stuff like that. But it's always been something that's like, like it's earned. Like it's yeah, never been it, like, it, it, hey, you've had. It I felt like life. I haven't been like, all right, yeah, you deserve, like you deserve it. You know, go get it. Like it's always been like, no, I'm gonna go take it. And I think it's like what you brought up earlier, like the whole size thing. But other than that, it's it's been fun, man. It is what it is. Uh, I like being the underdog. Because I look at his situation and the catcher at at the White Sox isn't like the best catcher in the league. Yeah. Um, and your short, the shortstop for the Diamondbacks isn't the best shortstop in the league or top five, in my opinion. So I, was, I didn't know if like <clears throat> y'all's journey would be easier since they're – not good and say y'all are doing better and they just call you up or do you, the people above y'all are better than y'all and they're gonna get called up first so i didn't yeah i mean to be honest i don't really think about all that mm-hmm. um just because i try and just keep my head where my feet are man like even kill yeah just yeah. you know like yeah. if whatever level i'm at that's i'm gonna try and be the best person at that level yeah. the best shortstop or wherever position i'm playing like you're just kind of thinking in the present man you yeah you can't keep thinking you can't about get bogged down because those are all controllable down here man controllables right like yeah. i got no control over if they call me up or if they send me down or whatever it's just whatever happens happens yeah. so i'm just gonna do it you know focus on what i can focus on but I got about three more questions. Do you got anything? I'm I'm been just kind of chilling. I mean, I don't like nothing's coming up, and if it does, <laughs> they answer or you call, you say it. So. <laughs> uh, okay. How do y'all feel about the? I guess the uh, robot umpires or whatever they like. Uh, See, oh, I didn't. They're, they're trying to replace the umpires. How do y'all feel about that? I haven't played with one or anything, but. I don't like it just because I like the human element um, of the game, the kind of human error part. Um, Mm -hmm. I like that. And then also uh, I think there's kind of little, like, intricacies, right? Like if a catcher drops a ball, even if it's right down the middle or something, usually it's like you can't call a strike. You can't call a strike, right? Like he didn't catch it exactly. Or if they get crossed up, you know, like just little things like that where the umpires understand it's like, nah, that's a ball. And so if I'm a hitter and I see the catcher just botching every single one and there's the robots coming over the speaker's strike, I'm going to be like, dude, yeah. that's not the same game. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, we're playing yeah, a different yeah. game now. That, that's like what one of the things that I'm not liking about all sports. Really. All sports is like all the changing they're doing, all the stuff they're trying to bring in to make the game shorter, faster. And Futuristic. Stuff. Yeah, it's so not, like not the game. Play. Yeah, that's not the game. Thing we talk about this is with football that he brought a good, a, a good point with how – you, you say you were it. Yeah, pretty much. Like, so the sport's changing because it was uh, with the targeting rules, right? Yeah. They're ejecting yeah. everyone and everything. Well, that rule, so the sports, I mean. We were watching the, uh, the Clemson game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ejected for targeting. Yeah. But it's like the dude's sliding. So I was like, yeah. how is that targeting? He's like, yeah. he, you're, you're, are you supposed to hit low or not? I mean, it just depends on, like, the situation. See, what sucks about like, that is literally. that same guy for Ohio State or for, Clemson. Uh, Clemson. He got thrown out the year before. The year right? before against yeah. LSU, bro. So it's like. It just depends. Dude. Bro. In his situation, which one you talking about? When, targeting. We talking when Justin Fields was spinning. Yeah. yeah, they called him for crowning. Yeah, it's just like it's like a lot of times like coaches like earlier coaches they teach you to tackle with your face up so like you know face mask yeah. or whatever. But it's like, I mean, he's spinning into you like you're just trying to literally. It's he's a runner, so he's yeah. like he's running. He's like not falling down. He's not exposed. Yeah, like, he's getting his yards. Yeah, so if he's like gonna do whatever, like you can't predict where he's gonna go. So exactly. it's like you're gonna hit him how you want to hit him. Last second, you can't just move your head in front of him. Yeah, like you're going full going speed, man. Him. Well, so what we were getting at was pretty much like you're either gonna change the game to make it safer for everyone that's playing it, but it's gonna get away from the roots of the game, or you're just gonna acknowledge like, hey, this game is not safe, like. A 6'5", 230-pound dude running at you full speed, it's going to be unsafe. I'm on that side. Like, it's, it's not a safe game. Like yeah, so – Everyone yeah. knows the risk, too. Exactly. The ball. The, the, yeah. Those are going to yeah. be the kind of, like, the routes that it's going to have to take. Or it's going to be like, hey, we can't tackle this way. Almost like rugby rules. I feel like you like, can make the game safer with the equipment-wise, but I think you should keep the style of the play the same. For sure, yeah. Just they're the 1% of the other people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're that big and – that strong, but it's like you're that big. But do you strong. think you're gonna keep adding rules? Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, saying that's what since he's saying, they're that big like, and that strong, like you can't make it safe really with yeah, like that's equipment. What I'm yeah, it's yeah. gonna be make unsafe. The, make the equipment better. Well, they have though. They, they have, but, that's, but, that's, but that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, you can't, like you can't. These dudes are too yeah. big. And these like, dudes are still like crushing big, each other, how, bro. How padded can the helmet be? Like, yeah. can it get it's, before it's just? It don't matter. Before it's just bubble wrap. What do you think? Do you I, think I don't know which safer? way. 
I like football the way it is. I think it should just be like a hey, the game is what it is. Here are the risks. Yeah. Sign up or don't sign, sign up. up. Yeah. Because there's Agreed. other sports. Which sucks. In I my mean, opinion. Their body, they put the bodies out on the line. Like, it, it, it does suck. And I think with the CTE stuff, there's more of, like, a discussion going on around yeah. it. You can't really deny that it's unsafe to constantly be hitting the head. I mean, yeah. there's no deniable. In my opinion, there's, yeah. there's, there's other sports that are more dangerous than football. For sure. What do you got? F1. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, UFC? Rugby? UFC, <laughs> UFC way worse. Oh, 100%. Because yeah. you yeah. have no gear on to protect you. 100%. Yeah. UFC, but, but see, I, yeah. think, I think those sports like UFC, like it's known. There's no sense. Yeah, like, it's yeah. violent. You're going to probably have no, yeah, yeah, yeah. make it But they don't have a problem with that, though. <laughs> well, because it's accepted. Like, it's like, yo, y'all agreed to do all this. Yeah. And so that's You're what I'm saying. You're agreeing to do that at football, though? No, I know. But but they're not changing uh, the rules. That's what I'm saying. Like, football is, is changing now. Like you said, yeah. there's no more kickoffs. Yeah, it's so like, offensive, too. Yeah, like, like there's there's you get ejected from the game for hitting someone too yeah. long now. Like, you couldn't – remember uh, the blindside blocks and stuff? I don't know. Yeah, those yeah, are that's what I'm saying. Like, like you're accepting anymore. playing football, and you know this is going to come. So why change it? You're accepting – UFC, you know elbows are going to that, come. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it so should why? be that way. Why? But why? I'm, I'm just saying the the only other alternative is they're going to have to keep adding more rules to make it safer. And then eventually, but that's it's what I'm saying. Like, why add those rules if you're accepting this stuff? Yeah, I I agree. I think it should just be like, yo, if you're the biggest specimen out here. Run as fast as you can <laughs> and hit the other biggest specimen as hard as you could. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, and they that's get paid. My, they they get paid it. to do it. Yeah. I mean, they get paid well. So those UFC True. fighters, bro. A lot of them get paid. Mm. The bags. The good bank. Fight. Yeah, yeah. The bank. Yeah, bank. The big ones, you know. Yeah, no, McGregor. Really. McGregor, getting McGregor his. makes a mill a fight, maybe. That's not a lot. That's true. Yeah, that's but, but I guess off the endorsements, it's still stuff, new, I mean, because though. all their all their space yeah, is over everything. It's still like if you're if you're on the undercard or like it's just kind of like oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Grind, man. yeah. yeah. Grind, no, yeah. That's, a, like, that's a legit dog but fight it, that's, <laughs> Literally. that's a legit opinion, dog that might fight be the hardest sport because once you lose a fight or two like you kind of get knocked out. yeah yeah you're out the door to the back of the bus yeah buddy. 100% yeah. yeah um what was the question you're gonna ask um I was gonna say since y'all were talking about like injuries and stuff like have y'all had any like major injuries that like kind of set you back like boring. yeah unfortunately I had um I tore my labrum in high school playing in a freaking flag football game with Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Zarate, his family and everyone. Turkey ball, man. Yeah, turkey ball on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I That's fell crazy. I fell and dislocated my shoulder and um I didn't know. So I played the whole season with it and it kept like dislocating. It hurts. Yeah, bad. And so it would like dislocate like out of the socket and it would slide back in like what? it'd be sore and I was like, dang, bro, this hurts. Because I, I was kind of in the same boat as you, but I had surgery a lot later than what you had it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I kind of had to go through this dilemma because it was my non-throwing shoulder, so yeah. it wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, but it started happening more frequently. I mean, it happened maybe like 10 times where this was going on throughout the season. Um, and so I had to kind of make the choice of like, hey, do you want to have this surgery and take six to eight months off going into college? You know, as, So I pretty much didn't get my whole freshman fall. Yeah. Um, and that was like a big time, right? I'm trying to earn a job and stuff like that. So I kind of had to go through that dilemma. And then we were in the playoffs at the time for my senior year of high school. Um, and so I had to kind of weigh those. And then just recently I broke my handmate uh, in my hand. So I had to have surgery on that uh, and get it taken out of. But that's a relatively small kind of injury and stuff. But, yeah, thankfully yeah. nothing big. Yeah, me uh, th- this past, uh, I guess, off season or – yeah, what sure, happened? I, uh, right? I ended up yeah. rupturing my Achilles, my left Achilles. Damn. Yeah, yeah bro, yeah. this was and crazy. Like a training session. He was actually there. I was just doing like single leg hops, whatever. And we just heard like a loud bam, bang. And like I kind of instantly knew like uh, that's definitely the Achilles. Like I didn't, I thought I rolled it for a second, but after a while it's like, nah, this doesn't feel right. So I like, kind of like walked off a little bit and I sat down. And I was like, yo, y'all go ahead, finish. And I'm like, I'm like oh, yeah, I hurt. I, know, this <laughs> hurt. I already know. I'm like, damn. So it's like cooling off, cooling off. I try to stand up on it. And it's just, ah, couldn't. They, they sent me to the, uh, like, a little quick, uh, like, emergency. Minor emergency. Yeah, minor yeah. emergency. Check it out. And she was like, hey, it's probably, probably ruptured. I'm like, dang. So I called the White Sox, told them. They're like, all right, well, you got to go do this, this, and that. They kind of, like, walked me through it, led me through the way. I had surgery the next day, and then after that, did my time off, did my rehab. Ooh, I'm sprinting now, so we're back. I'm almost 100. percent We should got taken care of quick. Do you yeah. feel the same? Because I we talked about this on one of the podcasts. 
Um, oh, like basketball players. That, or like, just Achilles injuries. Yeah, yeah that too. Like, yeah. You don't come back the same yes. if you look at any sport. A hundred percent. And I didn't, trust me, like I had six months to like read up on this. So I read on every story <laughs> I could. But uh, yeah, so I was telling him the other day, I was doing some catching stuff off the machine and I was like, yo, like I felt good. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, my foot. And he was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I was like, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. and like, I was there personally, too. I was like, like I, I feel good, man. Like, feels it feels good. I wouldn't say it's, it feels the same because, like, now I got, like, more, like, ankle mobility stuff because I was in a boot for four months. Like, didn't move it. So the mobility, like, the ankles and joints don't move the same. So I just got to keep, like, working on it and, like, popping it and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, dude, I wake up every day and it's like, all right like we're back to normal basically let's get let's get to work and like i've been lifting for months now so everything so far so good you know <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah another question was why COVID happened while you're on the off season um we got legalized in the minor leagues do y'all think it was a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing and i mean y'all can say if y'all want to if y'all use it or not but do you think if it's a good thing should it be allowed in majors or if it's a bad thing it shouldn't be allowed at all yeah i mean it's already allowed um well i don't want to say allowed in the major leagues but they're just not testing for it um and then same thing with the minor leagues now it's, well they it's, made it's, the rule official yeah yeah but like it's it's not that it's legal it's just that they're not testing for it right yeah. so um i guess that kind of depends on what state you're into um but from what we heard from the organizations is they're kind of going to treat it just like alcohol right yeah. i mean you can't show up to the field drunk can't get um, DUI, like that. stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, if like, you know, different things. Same thing. It's like what he said. If it's not legalized and you get caught with it, it's like, all right. It's going to well, be an issue. Yeah, yeah they're so. going to. According to like what we heard, like they'll send you like the, to a rehab facility. Treat it like alcoholism. Yeah. So, I mean, some people will probably use it for um, like the bus rides and stuff, help them sleep. Yeah. I'm sure some people will use it uh, how they see fit, but um, it's kind of up to the Yeah, individual. everybody's different, man. Yeah. I was going to say, do you Just, agree with it or not agree with it? I mean, I, I personally don't mind. It's not like I'm yeah. like I'm gonna say, oh no, nah, it shouldn't, or yeah, it should. It's teach their own. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, teach their own. Do what you want to do, man. Like I know Stephen A. Smith, he's very vocal about it. Like against he it, he agrees with it. Oh no, but yeah, only in off season. That's his. That's his take on it. Okay. So he agrees with it, but only in off season. He doesn't mind if you do it, but in season, it's like you're a professional, do your job. But yeah, off season, man. like you can do it, but he he's more on the side of like. The physical side of it, like it just help, like just helps you, like relax oh, like, in your body. Yeah, I mean, I I understand, I understand yeah. that take, but on the same note, it's like, dude, you're playing 140 games in the span That's of like 150 yeah. days. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's like, like, like you get like, one off day a month. You know, I'm, so I'm, I'm I I'm just kind of everywhere. Like, I agree with pets because you play <laughs> this. No, it's like you yeah, play this it's many just, games in like <laughs> this <laughs> short amount of time. Like, major leagues play. They can play like seven games in a row, five games in a row. And it's mm-hmm. like you're out there going, being a catcher, shortstop, or doing whatever. And it's like your body needs some kind of a break, break or some up. kind of a boost yeah. to like keep you going. It's yeah, like, it's not so natural I, to do that to yeah, your body. Yeah, I'm not against beds and depending on what it is. I mean, because they're, they're not making you swing. I'm also, yeah, that's what that's, <laughs> that's they're that's, not making you swing. That's the thing. You're, like, you're still swinging. I, uh, <laughs> I'm one of the few people that's for steroids. See, the, the only argument. Uh, that I could see for that this guy gave a speech in one of my classes was just that um, that I guess kind of levels the playing field because there's no more like genetic imbalance if everyone's like yeah that's up what to the same people want to see people yeah and then like the other the thing Jackson, is like bro. That's yeah what, like, that's everyone just was the swinging freak, the bat super man. hard just the freak. that's what uh, I'm saying like that's why I'm forced there because at the end of the day the argument I bring up is like you still have to swing the bat you still have to hit the ball steroids are gonna help you hit the ball. It, might, yeah, it helps you take the ball further. It just won't. Like, if somebody throws a fastball and you're late on it, then you just late on it. That was a steroids fault. That was your fault. Yeah, but to an extent, I mean, because if you're stronger and you can swing the bat quicker, then you yeah. have way more time you're to decide. Never, you're you're never you going to get blown up. <laughs> yeah, well, because you can swing it super quick. Yeah, yeah. So you have more time to decide whether or not you want to swing. Yeah, also, miss hit balls, you don't have to hit them as cleanly, and you could still get a, hit a home run. You know what I mean? Because you're stronger. And my, the other thing is that's what the fans want to see. They want to see home runs. Mm-hmm. They want to see the Luke and Baker balls hit out the damn park. They, they want to go to <laughs> Giant Stadium like that's damn, true. he hit in the river. Yeah. I was there. I think that would be good for the majors. That is, that is true, possible. but – on the flip side, I think a lot of fans want to see what the natural body can do. Like a guy who's that's just like so them can hit the ball so far. Like I can't do I that. I feel like that's more of the 
older Old crowd yeah. that wants That's, to see that. That is, yeah. I mean, it's a fair argument. Um, I don't know if I'd say uh, pads. Yeah. I'm, I'm down for them. I don't know the long term effects on the body that either. Too. I mean, but the, it's more of pads that like relax your muscles like stuff like that like muscle relaxers and stuff like that yeah i don't even know what the list is like when i think of peds i just it's, think of steroids that's yeah, all i think yeah. of. i don't i don't know what the of, list but it's is literally yeah. it's everything anything that helps your body like yeah, even yeah, yeah. supplements like, there I are know the, i don't know the enough. i don't know the oh, yeah. the yeah. list but i'm sure it's it is it is a lot there's a lot of stories of guys in the minors and the majors they get popped for stuff that and they have no clue no clue that it's in there no clue i mean i'm sure he knew but somebody did that in the major somebody's got Got um, a suspension. Robinson, Robinson Cano? Cano? No, it was this uh, Talking just about recent. pitcher? Yeah, I forgot who it was, but I know he got this last season. And maybe it was Robinson Cano, but he he got pop for pets here. Yeah, so yeah I mean, and some people don't know that they could just be using like cream and the next thing you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A of, there's a lot of things, yeah, man. Yeah. And that's, I don't know if it's gone as pets, but that can be, a, it's a performance enhancement. Like, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I I'm fine with PEDS because you play this amount of games and you sometimes you play games this short. You period. need something to help the body regenerate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what I'm I'm fine with that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we even had we had like the nutritionist come and was like, hey, uh, the Nature Valley granola bar it was like, hey, this isn't approved by whatever yeah. organization. There was could a, fail a drug test for it. And you're I like, think in college bro. they told us uh, uh that's crazy. The there's certain uh, there's a certain flavor of uh, vitamin water that if you drank before a drug test you could fail. Yeah. So they're like, don't yeah. drink that it's color. I'm like, stuff. Yeah. like, hey, and yeah. they come whenever, bro. Those drug tests oh, people yeah. random. Ooh. You just get done with the game. You yeah, change it. Yeah. He walks in. Yo, Martinez, yeah. Pan, let's I, go. I got called in the fourth right inning. The I got called in the fourth inning. They're like, hey, yeah. you got to go, go pee in there. I'm like, what? Yeah, right. they'll try, they'll try what to find you. What if you can't you. pee? You sit there yeah, and wait. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, wait. You sit there and wait. I'm like, if you're playing the game. Oh, then you got to No, then then you either go just go back and play, and then you got to go back. But they watch like everything and make sure. Oh like, yeah, yeah. They sit there and watch games. They sure. don't. They don't miss a beat. No, I'm saying like if you go back and play, it's like they just watch like. Oh, they, probably. They go with you and like make sure you don't take anything. Well, I mean you don't you don't know when they're coming. It's yeah. like no, just saying, on like, a road trip and they just show up. In the fourth well, no, they'll, they'll just call the next guy that's on the list. So like, uh, oh, you go. Okay, go. You go, and then yeah, but there's no like. It's not like if he was using something, he has some magic pill that's like, oh, now I'm clean. You know, like yeah, there's nothing like that. No, yeah, no, but like I know some people like. If you, if they just because I know the express has a bathroom in their dugout, so if they go, oh, and something just trying to, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to ever be in that situation, yeah, so I'm not, real. I wouldn't even take the chance, but I couldn't imagine having to go through that stress in the middle of the yeah, game. Sure. That happened in Texas. Uh, we were in high school, that's when uh, Cameron Cox, uh, Cameron yeah, Cox, he got that was forgot like a about this man that happened mm. with, with that. Um, he was at Texas and he peed for somebody and uh. The whole thing went dang. on. It was like Adrian Etier and some other people, but that happened with that, and I was like, "Damn, that sucks." Yeah, yeah, usually the guys watch. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They're, like they're right just, on, they're they're just like, right hey, on, fit eye to eye, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They'll let you All right. know. They'll let All you right. know. It's, um, it's some locker room stuff. And then I guess going back to the Star Wars, another one question I wanted to ask y'all: Like, do you y'all think the the balls are juiced, or do you think the, ball, the game's just evolving? Like players are just they're just stronger. Oh, the big league balls are yeah, harder. The man. big league balls yeah. are juice for yeah, sure. Yeah, they're juice. Yeah, because uh, that was like because that, that that was another argument. I had. I was like, what's the difference in someone taking steroids and the balls being juiced? For most, for the most part, the guys that have gotten into the triple A part and they see the difference, they're like, dude, you just make contact with it and that thing flies. Yeah, well, I think it kind of evens the playing field because uh, I think the pitchers now, it's Ooh, just dude. like it's unbelievable how some of these guys, I mean, they'll make it move left, right, up, I mean, down. At, at, all, like, and at a hundred. At a like hundred. Slider. That's what I mean. And so it's like, dude, if I hit that, I should yeah, be rewarded. that's what I'm saying. I should be rewarded if I make yeah, contact yeah. with that how I'm supposed to. Like it shouldn't be a little, you know, duck fart sing or anything. Yeah. Like that ball should be flying if I hit that ball. Because <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I have this argument all the time that baseball is a hard sport. As not even being biased, like it is no, like just like, to make contact. I mean, it's that's what I'm there's saying. so like, many uh, variables, and it's hard to hit nine, 90 mile per hour fastball, but it's harder to hit a 90 mile per hour fastball that's moving. Mm. 100. Well, and you don't know which way it's going. You yeah. don't know if it's going to end up like, and like, instance, like Max spin. Scherzer, Justin Verlander, yeah. like that shit ain't flat. Well, and I don't think people realize like watching on TV, you only see the. 0.1% of the 1% that are in the big leagues taking <laughs> big league swings and yeah. doing well. And so you're like, oh, like, you know, I could I could go out there and do that. 
But like when you're in the box and you got someone like Mason Thompson who's like six 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 seven, mm. dude, they look like they're like twenty feet away from you. Like it looks yeah, like he's right here. Like, like, because it's like he's just throwing ball hundred like, miles an hour at me. One like. of the people that we like is Marcus Stroman because the height doesn't measure heart. Yeah. But it's like people like that don't get picked because yeah, you can throw ninety seven just like Mason Thompson or everybody else, but. When you're releasing here, the and Mason Thompson yeah. releasing over there, yeah. the perception's like, so you got to do yeah. something to stand out. Yeah, yeah. 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 well, and that's why he changes up. He yeah, changes that's why you got to do like, something to stand yeah. out. He's bro. doing something to, to kind of get his, name, his, Every, his game going. I watch yeah. him. Uh, Marcus Stroman. Oh, yeah, I follow him on Twitter, man. All his stuff that he does is crazy. You liked my tweet the other day, by the way. There you go. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out, But yeah, now he's good, man. All the stuff that he puts out, like course ability, all that stuff. He's always working on his game, and he's he's gross, nasty, and the tats, bro. Oh, tats. He's, yeah, he's, he's stupid. Tats. Yeah, he's yeah, exactly. Tats are nice, he's bro. Yeah, the crazy. whole collage on the back of yeah. his sick. I didn't know he was tatted like that. I want to ask another question. I ask her off camera; it's a little controversial. But uh, last question: Big Twelve or SEC? And he brought it back up. Oh, come on, bro! <laughs> come Automatic on. SEC. This I mean, man, it's not this, even a debate. This man, when it's you say when you say UT, what do you say? Texas. Exactly. <laughs> Ain't nobody say University <laughs> of Tennessee. Nice, boy. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's, nice. That's crazy. About? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a good one. That is a good one. That's what they always bring uh, up. But conference as a whole, come nah, on, you can't. Even, I, I would have to agree, man. SEC, you can't like the numbers that they put out. Would I have played crazy. the Big Twelve? Hundred percent. I'd have been there. I'd play the anywhere. I'd been there in a heartbeat. But mm. <laughs> my, my top schools, if I, if I, if I was like a top one. Um, it wouldn't be Texas. If I had three schools, it would be like South Carolina, Florida, and North Carolina. Dang. Those are, those are all good schools. Yeah. I would have went to Texas in a heartbeat. That's why I'm bitter. No, I'm not going to lie. I'm bitter. Well, just like if, if I was like a top dude and I could go anywhere, those are my top schools. Mm. I mean, those are those are good picks, yeah. man. Yeah, it is, it is kind of just like shitty when you're a hometown kid. And like, that, I think yeah. that, that was the thing. I, I think both of us kind of in the same boat is just yeah, like. It's, that's why he was always so happy in Texas. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you always see him. That's yeah. All the time. I mean, bro. I don't know um, uh, Samaje's story or anything, but same deal. It's like, dude, yeah. this guy's 20 minutes or yeah. not, not even he's 10 minutes from the campus. Why is he going five hours had, away? Had somebody else. Well, that's, that's even why. the thing now, like with all these central Texas kids, like the football, like why are they going kids, out of state? They're all going out yeah. of state. Yeah. Like, like, none of them ever get recruited by Texas. That's what I mean. It's and like, dude, get, like, that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, it's like, this is Texas. They should be able to get, if they offer you, it'd be like, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that was one of the things was just like, um, I just, and it was, it was to no one's fault other than my own. I'm like, I don't think, at the time, I was ready to play at Texas. I think I had to go through those hoops that I did in order to be ready to play. Um, did you like big, try to talk to Texas when you were going from? Uh, yeah. So um, actually, the the recruiting coordinator that was at Texas, he had coached at Sac State um, before he got the job at Texas, and so that's how I got uh, into Sac State. And then when Augie Staff got let go, uh, he ended up back there at um, at Sacramento State mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, but. I always wanted to go there. That was my dreams. I mean, that's obviously, a dope right? That's facility. Obviously, right? I mean, five minutes from home, whatever. But it's, I mean, you're in this town. How could you not want to? Besides, besides that, like, I would want to go somewhere that has a dope facility and they have a dope facility. Oh, like, everything, yeah. everything about it. Yeah. Everything it about it. It feels amazing. Even when they renovated it, yeah. it feels amazing. Same with, um, with, I'm sure, did you play Vandy or no? Yeah, yeah. So we went to Vandy. Yeah, Vandy. Even when you play at Vandy. Bro, crazy, huh? That's Got iPads amazing. on all the squat racks and everything. Telling you, really? I was like, how was Duke? Damn near lift the weight for you. Duke? Um, Duke was our high. Right. We we so we went to uh, <laughs> said it the Bull Durham um, the the Durham Bulls. We went and played at uh, at their place too, um, which I think is where they play their home games. Well, wasn't it that Duke when you were in the Team USA thing? No, no, no. They were in, they were in Cary, North Carolina, but we just went to the campus just to go check it out and stuff. But I think that was just a practice field uh -huh. um, that we were checking out, which was like a turf field, kind of out in the woods, but. The campus looked like Hogwarts, if I'm being real. <laughs> I mean, the campus was pretty sick. What was the best facility you played at? Uh, let me think. Probably Arkansas. Really? Yeah, Arkansas goes nuts. Yeah, bro. I heard they go crazy. Arkansas goes nuts. They have a whole indoor, like, infield and everything. You can take BP. Like, you could play a live game without the outfield there, pretty much. Uh, but the fans, bro, when we were there. Well, just besides the fans, just the facility. Alone. Probably Arkansas, yeah. yeah. I'm probably going yeah. to Arkansas. Facilit but I didn't get to go to like LSU alone? and stuff like that. We, I, I didn't I don't travel like, to LSU like or anything. If you watch it on, on both of theirs, if you watch it on TV, it just doesn't look. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Um, 
but yeah, Arkansas. I mean, maybe I'm biased because of, like the fans. Like I couldn't even hear myself. Dang, there's fifteen thousand. So did you not play Mississippi State? We did, but we played them at home. No, you didn't play at Mississippi. No, State. No, 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 no. Yeah, we I, didn't play I feel at like Mississippi State. Like theirs will be, theirs will probably beat Arkansas. Yeah, Stark, Starkville's dope. Um, and then Ole Miss is probably a rager mm-hmm. as well. But uh, yeah, better we didn't go Vandy's. to Vandy's. Fun place to play. Like, at. Just the facility. Dude, I didn't. Better all, than all right, the only problem I have with Vandy's is, is the field itself, bro. The the turf. It's like if you just put like AstroTurf on this table, it's just super it hard, like, super yeah. fast. Well, it just it probably is old. Yeah, well, well, and that's the thing. But it was just like. Dude, anyone that was hitting the ball was coming off at like 120 miles an hour. I'm like, dude, this thing is smoked. Because bro, when right uh, Texas got their new turf, you slide from first base and make it a second base. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, that was the only yeah, thing. That's what, playing in Texas like with their old turf, you couldn't hit a ball out the infield, bro. It was slow. You couldn't hit a ball out the mm-hmm. infield. Before they got the new one? Yeah, yeah. It was tough. You, you better square that thing up. See, Vandy was straight opposite. But Nashville, Nashville's tight. Nashville's a cool area. See, so, like, I, mean, I, I take all that When we play Texas at our place, Cody and all of them were complaining about our turf because it played fast. Because it was new. Yeah, and he was like, oh, this plays too fast, man. Too many knocks. Go field it. Like, <laughs> like Get a better job. Pitchers. Get bad a better job. <laughs> Get a better job. <laughs> all right, well, that will do it for this episode of Opinionated Off Topic. Uh, thank you all boys again for coming out. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I can keep us. going on and on. And yeah, I know. Serious, we'll talk right bro. Um, there's going to be a season this season, right? On time or no? That's what we're hoping for. That's, that's what we're planning yeah, we on. We haven't gotten word, but um, yeah. I mean, we're gearing up as if it is. So, All right. Yeah, got well, um, got it. we'll have their team, all their links down in the description below. Um, but like I said, again, thank you all for coming out. Wait, did you have any questions for them? I don't know if you did or not. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool just hearing y'all's yeah. journey, you know? For sure, man. man. Yeah. Thank you guys hearing for having us. Hearing how being there is a different perspective. Like, you need more play, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's what it is. Bro. Just a bunch of dudes. Just giant kids, bro. Yeah. Just grown kids. Yeah, much. Yeah, it is. Basically. All right, well, that'll do it for this episode, and we'll see y'all guys next time. Peace. Peace.